All right, boys. Welcome to the official Kane Mains Q and A, hosted by the one and only Narasid, the Grandmaster player, Rustafarian, or the or the ex Grandmaster player rather. Yeah, washed up. Yeah, washed up diamond, and me, who's not even diamond yet this season. Yet, operative word there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hoping to reach it. <laughs> Word there. Well, you guys could give yourselves some time to uh, introduce yourselves, and then we can start after it. All right, you're first, Narasid. I'm, I'm shy, dude. <laughs> okay, sure. Well, my name is Narasid. I've been playing Kane since beginning of Season 8. And as far as League credential goes, I've peaked, like, Grandmaster 180 LP last season. And uh, playing pretty much only Kane. And, yeah, I've been around, like, the Kane Mains community. For a lot of time, and yeah, I'm just here to answer a lot of your questions. Uh, I am Rastafarian. I started playing Kane, I guess, it probably would have been around late September of 2018 when the Odyssey skin came out. That was the only reason I played the champion, is because that skin looked really cool. Hmm. And I don't know, I just kind of clicked with the champion more than anything else I've played in League. I used to be a Fizz one trick. So, yeah, we've come a long way. Um, I peaked GM 241 LP. I ended that. That was my peak, my ending rank. So, and if, if you're in the Discord, you'll probably know me as the guy who picks a lot of fights with people that I don't agree with. So, <laughs> kind of unfortunate, but that is how it is. All right. And, well, I own the server. Pretty much random. I started playing Kane in 2017. Been playing him since then. I'm pretty sure that I know a lot of things about him, and that my knowledge comes pretty close to these two high level players that I'm gonna be talking with today. And yeah, that's about it. All right. All right so the introductions are, are over. Uh, yeah, we can start. Form choosing philosophy. Does anyone volunteer for the topic? All right. <clears throat> so a lot of people these days are going to say either one of two things. And I see this all the time on the subreddit. I see this all the time on the discord. It's either Rost is trash or SA is trash. What? And I'm going to be straight with you guys. Both of them suck. True. True. Champion, champion just isn't very good right now. So we got to make do with what we've got. Yeah. I find personally that if you have at least two tanky members on the team because of the strength of bruisers and such right now, like with the Blather and King buffs and everything, uh, going blue into that can be troll if some of the squishies are either mages or like high peel 80 carries. Something yeah. like Vayne has stealth, Kaisa has stealth. Kaisa stealth can also just really fucks us. Too, so it's really annoying. Yeah, Zanya's absolutely dumpsters our champion more than any other assassin in the entire game. Yeah. So, I personally find that if there's at least two tankier champions, I guess we'll refer to them as, and they have at least, like, one of their squishies is a mage that can build Zanya's, uh, maybe they have, like, Vayner Kaisa. I know it sounds counterproductive, especially going red into something like Vayne, but your chances of killing her as blue past like 15, 20 minutes are pretty slim unless she's bad. And if you can play around your team, I know solo Q can't trust your teammates. If you can play around your team, landing one Ross W can guarantee a kill on an 80 carry. So I personally am going to go red at most games just because that's what I prefer playing. But those are my statistics, like, or that's my credentials for going red as opposed to blue. If they have, like, four squishies, I'm going to go blue every time. Okay. Even if it's, like, a bunch of Zonia's builders. Or, I think blue is just more valuable. Yeah, there. because, yeah, I'll just chime in now. So, like, I think that red is really trash if they have, like, too much kiting. Like, basically, you would rather just play blue and just straight up into down into their team if they have, like, four squishies and only full kiting and no tanks, basically. I see a lot of people that just kind of will still go red pretty much every single game, and I think that's a mistake, and I think you should 
learn how to play both forms, obviously. I don't think one tricking a form, because I know a lot of people one trick a form or whatever, but if you want to make the full out of this champion, the full style of the champion, you got to learn how to play both. But yeah, basically, I will go blue, even if they have like maybe one, if they have like two bruisers that aren't two, um, uh, that aren't like a su super tanks, and the rest are squishies that I can easily kill and snowball off. I'll, I will still maybe go blue in those scenarios because I think that I can I can get fed enough to eventually one shot their bruisers afterwards. But that would require them to have like squishy champions that are easy to kill and that have a hard time building zones like immobile ADCs and stuff like that, and probably enchanter supports. So it's very it's very situational, but that's essentially what I look for. And if these conditions aren't really met, or if they don't have like four squishies or whatever, if they have like maybe two like really tanky champions or three and plus then i'll just go red on default some games though like the games that it's really 50 50 like some games you can actually go both forms depending on the state of the game then i just like to go dark harvest and then if if i just get red then i'll just go dark harvest red and maybe go for a little bit of a damage heavy build like it's a very situational build but it can actually work and aside from that uh if I get blue first, then I'll just go blue. Like some games, but it's 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 very situational again. But yeah, just look for those things that I mentioned at the beginning. Yeah, as Naris had said, in Dark Harvest King games, when you're not sure which form you want to go for, when both could work, whichever you get first in the early game, you go for it, mm -hmm. if you have a snowball. Mm -hmm. If you're not snowballing, most of the time, you're probably going to be better off playing Rot from behind because he just offers more to the team with his knock-up W. But other than that, I would pretty much barely ever pick Shadow Assassin. I agree a lot with Rastafarian when he said that going Rast is probably the optimal choice into teams with two tanks and three squishies, especially if one of those three squishies is a mage or like something like Wayne, because Wayne, Kai'Sa, champions like that, they can easily dodge your Shadow Assassin W, and that's like already 50% of your damage yeah. gone, and then you don't want to just pop and die. Uh, to, to expand real quick on like the the versus Vayne and Kaisa thing, the, the other thing that makes it so you can't kill those champions is, especially if they dodge your W, almost all the time they will build, well, Kaisa not as much, but she builds Zonias a lot of the time, but Vayne specifically will get something like Phantom Dancer, and Phantom Dancer shield is significant. You will almost never kill that champion through that shield, ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree with that, 100%. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, essentially, Shadow Assassin, go for him. I will, I will when you say... you can see yourself snowballing, if not... Okay, I will say, though, comps. like, in two comps that you are behind, but there's, like, literally, like, five squishy champions and only kiting, I will still go then Shadow should... Assassin. Yeah, yeah. Even if uh, I'm behind, because Rost is straight-up useless into those champions. Yeah, there's a lot of, like... There... I, feel like it, it, I feel like it comes down to um, what type of champions they are, they, they are though. Exactly. If, it, if it's, like, melee... If it's like melee squishies, I would still go Rust. But don't do. But if it's like four ranged squishies, one melee squishy, yeah, I would still yeah. go Shadow. But don't do the mistake of trying to adapt to your own team. Like that's the mistake I see a lot of people do. Like they try to fit in their team. Like oh, we need a tank. No, yeah, you're most variable in solo, is in solo queue. Not a tank. Okay, so in solo queue, at the very least. Your only variable when it comes to form choosing should be the enemy team comp because you're pretty much looking to one v nine every single game. Like uh, so. If your team is pretty much all squishies, but the enemy team is also pretty much all squishies, you don't want to just fit the team and be like, okay, I'll, I'll be the front line. No, just go Shadow Assassin and 1v9. Like, it, it's all, it, it's almost only based in, on the enemy comp in solo queue. Yeah, especially as as Marin said, <laughs> Red Cane is not a tank, not at all. You, yeah. are, you are a bruiser with assassin based stats. Exactly. Like, exactly. Yeah. yeah. You have low armor, low magic resist. You have okay HP, but like and like they build, they build execute, that... they build healing reduction, and you're not even that much of a tank, really. Like, yeah, you you, you're just kind you're, of like you're a, drain a... Tank. you're a drain tank. You depend on your damage that you dish out. You exactly. can't just go in and not get one shot. Exactly. You're gonna get one shot if you're not able to fight the. 
if they have high burst, you're useless as a yeah, and especially the kiting thing earlier, just kind of to kind of elaborate on that, one of the things that makes Blue Cane really good about kiting, despite the fact, or including the fact that his E is just on a lower cooldown, is it prevents you from being slowed as well, which is really important. Yeah. Shit like Zyra plants, the vine spitters that like slow you for like, it's some insane amount when they auto you. You can just run away from those. Whereas like, mm -hmm. if you're red and you get locked down by those in her ult, you're, you're dead. That's it. You're done, dude. Bye. Yeah. So that's definitely something important to keep in mind when you're choosing forms versus, versus kiting comps specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, shall we just go straight to the builds now? Is there anything to explain yeah. about form choosing? Okay. We could uh, transition into runes before we actually get into builds. Okay, sure. We can but... do runes. We can do runes before whatever. Oh, I have, I have a lot to say about this. Sorry. Right. About runes. All right, you can go first. Yeah. Sure, um. Then. So. Pretty much exclusively on Red Cane, unless you are into very specific team comps, you will almost always want to pick Conquer. Of course. And that's because even if it, like, sort of segueing into something else, we don't really have a ton of optimal runes on uh, Kane anymore since the removal of Dark Harvest. Old Dark Harvest, if anyone remembers that. Um, yeah. So, that was so good <laughs> rest in peace. I, I miss it very much every yeah. day. Yeah. So we, we kind of have to make do with what we've got, and Conquer offers just so much. It really enhances Red Kane's strengths of wanting to all in all the time. Mm -hmm. Like it you gives never him all he needs, basically yeah. all he needs. It gives yeah. him damage. It gives him healing. He uses all of it. Mm -hmm. Now there's a lot of people like moving on to the smaller runes. Um, I've I've seen this a lot, who want to take Presence of Mind on Rost. And I think that there is definitely a time and place for this, but full tank comps, full tank comps where you will be having incredibly extended fights. But Triumph, it, it gives you a lot more wiggle room in the early game. It will let you do things like tank a tower shot, live through an ignite if you're ganking like a dangerous lane, uh, yep. or any bot lane fight ever. Um, it, it just gives you so much more. You're not really looking at like. Like the last time I, that I discussed this with someone, there was like a whole bunch of napkin math on like how much gold efficiency the um, like gold that you get on kill that Triumph gives you versus the mana extension that Presence of Mind gives you. Like we don't give a fuck about that. Yeah. The only thing that matters about those runes is the refresh on kill, and mm -hmm. you're going to have just a lot more versatility in the early game, which is typically what matters. And I, 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 I like to say that we're not taking runes to patch our weaknesses. We're taking runes to, like, make us better enhance at what we strength, do. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. To enhance our good sides. Exactly. And it, it is definitely a little hypocritical to say that and then talk about how, how good of an early game rune Triumph is. But, like, sometimes you have to just... If there's a very clear-cut choice, you just have to take it. Mm-hmm. Uh, as for uh, coup de gras versus last stand, um, it always gras, go last like... stand pretty much. Yeah, on red it's, always. On red always last stand. It's just way better than coup. Um, and that's for pretty much like every champion that has a choice between those two runes. Uh, blue cane, you're going to want to go coup de gras just because yeah. it's almost always going to give him more damage. If you're low HP, you're probably dead anyway and not yeah, actually exactly. fighting. So or you out of the fight and you can't do shit. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay, that's you actually talk about... I wasn't aware of myself going last stand over Coupe de Gras on Ras. Yeah, on it's, actual... very, it's very fucking good, yeah. It's but, just um... like, and that's just not just like a cane thing, that's like literally every Bruiser champion. Yeah. If you're I, fighting I a it, lot... Yeah, I take it even on Master Yi, like it's super good. Yeah, you're taking last stand on everybody, but yeah, we can yeah. segue into Naris to talk about blue runes here, because that's definitely his area of expertise. Okay, so when it comes to blue runes, you want to be taking Dark Harvest, obviously. Then you want to be taking Sudden Impact. It's just Sudden Impact, especially, is really good for you early to mid game because even pre form, you so you're much that, time. yeah, you queue so much and like you get that bonus of lethality really frequently. He procs it it as lasts, well, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it lasts for what? It lasts for five seconds and your queue has like a, a little bit more of a glide, like seven seconds or some shit, and then you max it. So it, you come down, you basically have permanent access to that lethality. So it's just like, really really good you don't want to be taking like any of it 
like cheap shot or anything. Uh, then I like, okay, so my personal favorite after Sun Impact, I like to take Eyeball Collection on the games that I like to be snowballing, but you can also take Zombie Ward and Ghost Poro if, uh, if you feel like that's a safer option. And uh, Ravenous Hunter versus Relentless Hunter is actually, I know everybody likes to take Relentless Hunter, but it doesn't make that much of a difference, and I feel like Ravenous Hunter gives you so much, like, good sustain, and, like, especially mid-game, where all you have is really your E, and I feel like just, it keeps you really healthy when, like, you farm jungle camps and you want to stay on the map, on the map mid-game, because you go down HP, like, really quickly, it allows you to just fully heal on camps, it also can, it's not very synergetic when it comes to fights, but I feel like, Relentless Hunter isn't that useful because you you, you build Mobis, you build Yomus, you go fast anyways. So I, th I think Ravenous is just very good for the mid-game sustain, but that's... Uh, opinion, that's real quick, if, if I segue in here, opinion yeah. on Ultimate Hunter, maybe. Okay. I, I have okay. seen stats of it on Lolitics, so want to hear your thoughts on that. Okay, Ultimate Hunter can be actually really interesting because Kane is a very, especially Shadow Assassin, because Ross, Ross can usually get by without using ulti sometimes, but Blue, Blue Kane is very ulti dependent. Like, you don't want to go in without your ulti because what will happen is that if they have flash, if they have anything, and you don't have your ulti, you just die. You just die on the spot. Like, your ulti is pretty much your escape, assassination, like, it's, it's your everything tool, basically. Uh, and if they have anything, then you're very old dependent. But I haven't done a lot of testing with Ultimate Hunter, but that that could definitely be an option. And if somebody c came up to me and said like, "Hey, look, I take Ultimate Hunter on Blue," like I I would probably accept it. Like it's like it's definitely an interesting idea. But again, f for now, I, I just pretty much play with Ravenous because it's just really it, it just allows you to stay on the map way longer. Without burning too much mana. As far as secondary goes, you want to go Prince of Mine every single game on blue because you want to be spamming the hell out of your E. You want to be all over the map. You want to like basically just E spam, be everywhere, just poke with W, just like do apply as much pressure as you can, and like pretty much just, you even just use your Q to like move faster from point A to point B. You want to do all those things to have like the highest uh, the highest amount of impact mid game. So uh, it's just really good take Prince of Mind to make the maximum y use of your kit as Shadow Assassin, and uh, and then you you just take Kuda Gra because yeah you, you're just playing an assassin and that's pretty much the only thing that that you really take otherwise against he CC heavy comps maybe you go tenacity but like let's be honest you get CC you died w w whatever it lasts like. Point one second or not, like it, it doesn't matter. So yeah, your only defense against CC is blue is Edge of Night and Stopwatch. That's it. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, Edge of Night is definitely a good buy, but we'll, we'll get to that into items. So yeah, as far as minion runes go, like on both forms that you just go offense, 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 and armor for jungle clearing. Unless you're like against very AP heavy comp, then you would go magic resist. But usually, you you just mostly go armor to reduce camp damage. But yeah. Talking about AP heavy comps, I want to point something out. On Rust, you do not go domination every single game. Secondary. After okay, yeah, we, we didn't think like, about Rust secondaries, yeah. Well, ba basically, yeah, yeah. how that exactly. works I, is, yeah. Well, you, you can go ahead. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay, I'll go in depth about it. So I've been playing with Transcendence a lot in the past year, actually almost exclusively, which was a mistake. You do not take Transcendence every single game. However, into AP heavy comps, say three or four AP champions. You want to go transcend secondary either together with absolute, wait, no, it's Gathering Storm or um, Nimbus Cloak, I think. Yeah, yeah. Nimbus, Nimbus Cloak, Cloak is the, uh, the best um, first line one for us. Exactly. Transcendence allows you to have the insane item combination of Death Dance, Spirit Visage, Ma of Memortus. It's very good. The amount of CDR you accumulate for that in the end transitions into AD together with the MR, it results in like the best nut you would ever have playing Rust against. Yeah, it's it's actually really runes. crazy. At full build, it, uh, the rune will give you 36 AD, which is the equivalent of like, how much of Gathering Storm is that? 40 minutes, 30 minutes, somewhere around yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, around that point. It's mm -hmm. it's actually like pretty nuts. And it, it, it makes 
uh, like previously really bad item buys in my opinion. Like I, I don't think that Caulfields is a very good item, but it turns Caulfields from a 25 AD item into a 37 AD item. It, it basically makes Caulfields a BF sword for 200 gold cheaper. Exactly. Also, another noob trap that I want to uh, mention: if you're playing Rost against non-CC heavy comps, against comps which only have like barely any CC or knockups, or knockups, people tend to still go tenacity into or bloodline which both i would call a mistake mm. and that's because rust like okay first of all tenacity tenacity is not going to help you with anything if they do not have any cc um not even knockups because tenacity doesn't influence that bloodline you do not have the attack speed to... that's troll bloodline's troll don't ever yeah. exactly. That's don't dumb. ever take it. You don't have the attack speed to actually utilize it. The best thing for you to go for is alacrity to be able to weave in auto attacks more easily between abilities and to just, yeah, gain yeah. some more DPS. I will say though, alacrity is only good if they have like absolutely no CC because it's not the greatest synergy either. If they have only like one CC or two or three, like just a few that tenacity can help against, I'll just go tenacity because it's. Because Alacrity, sure, can be good if they have, like, literally nothing, then Tenacity is just useless. But if Tenacity can have any use, I'll just go Tenacity, because, like, Alacrity can be nice, but it's not the best energy either. Yeah, yeah that's definitely, it's definitely a game-by-game -game thing. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Always depends on the enemy comp. But, yeah. generally speaking, Tenacity is probably the best. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would say that's pretty much it. Okay, no, nah, okay, for runes, yeah. Mm. Well, basically, secondary. I, I will interject one more thing. Um, yep. yeah, sure. On blue cane specifically, this is what I do, and this is personal preference. If you don't think that you're going to be able to snowball as hard as um, like you would like to, then instead of taking precision secondary with presence of mind and coup de gras, you can also go inspiration with boots and debt. Because it allows you to have better back timing. Hmm, and it true. saves you 300 gold. Yeah. It's but, not as popular as it has been in the past since New Presence of Mind is incredibly good on Blue Cane. Yeah. But it's still... It's hedging viability. I, I, w I wouldn't go at every game, definitely. But if you're against some like a, a really bad matchup like Elise and you have to go Blue, then I would consider taking something like that. Because yeah, you, you don't want to be more, at yeah. like, yeah, you don't want to be at like twenty minutes and not have your presence of mind fully stacked. That shit is, uh, that shit is awful. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. like very feast or famine oriented, which is essentially the playstyle you want to go for when you're playing blue. So most of your most of the time, you should be going um, a presence of mind and coup de gras and like really try to get better at that pl at that playstyle and like try to play optimally, but. In in really bad scenarios, you could go into like sorcery, sorcery for Northlang, or or you could go into inspiration for their back timing as well. That could work too. But uh, basically, for Rost runes, because we didn't really go into um, uh, we didn't really go into secondary for Rost aside from the transcendence one. You usually just want to be going like sudden impact and uh, and ravenous hunter every single game. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There are the only situation I would go anything different is like when Marin talked about the AP stuff. That's I I don't go anything else. On. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. Never. Yeah, those two are the best, and that's like full yeah. stop. Period. It's it's way way too synergistic with our champion. Like exactly, there almost is never reason to go anything else. Yep. The, the other thing before, before we're done on the topic of runes, I do want to talk about Dark Harvest Rost a little bit. Oh yeah, definitely very very viable. Uh, if they have, I'm trying to think of like a team comp. Um, it's something like it's usually if they uh, lack it's, it's kiting. Hard. It's usually if they lack kiting, but they lack kind of burst damage at the same time. It's kind of weird. It's very specific scenarios. It's if basically, they have two, two tanks, three squishy scumps, basically. Yeah. Like if you are have to go red but you still want to threaten backline because that's the one thing that Conqueror doesn't really do is it doesn't allow us to threaten backline very well. Yeah. yeah. Whereas the bonus burst damage from Dark Harvest is is quite potent at threaten, threatening backline. Yeah. Also, 
I have another thing to add as well, and that is Electrocute. I want to mention why Electrocute is bad and why you should always take Dark Harvest over it, at least right now with the current numbers. Electrocute is not going to help your early, early game, period. Early game is Kane. Most of the time, you want to be farming. The only situations when you ever want to go for ganks is when you're sure you can either um, force out a flash or get a kill. Like, if not even... Mm. In fights, Dark Harvest is going to be more than enough to get triggered, get the slight damage off, and get it stacking for the late game. Electrocute is simply not... Like, it's at, really bad. Yeah, it, like, it, it, it's it just bad. Me, it doesn't it help you. Also, times. exactly, it, it did. And it, in late game, it doesn't reset, unlike Dark Harvest. Yeah, like game, it's awful. Which also, like, yeah, it's just bad. Don't take Electrocute. It's a noob trap. Mm -hmm. All right, so are we ready to go into builds? Yeah, we are. All right. Take Black Cleaver always on Ras. Take Dustblade always on Shadow Assassin. Yeah, those are the yeah. two, like... You Super need fun. it to work on the champ. The, and the reason why Duskblade is so good on blue is because the slow that it applies when you get the auto attack, unless they're flashing or using yeah, mobility skill. Yeah, you land for free, yeah. Like, I like we'll to almost this. always land W. Yeah, but yeah, well basically you want to do this combo where it's like you just you just run into them, auto attack them for the dust play proc, and then you WQ. You want to do this against like Jin or like any target that has a lot of movement speed that just gets cocked by the 99% slow, and then you can just pretty much burst them out. It, it's a combo. We'll, we'll get that. We'll get to that into a into champion mechanics but uh yeah as far as item goes i want to hear you guys' opinion on the blue smite versus red smite that's a pretty okay so one. i mean into um, two okay do you want to can go i open up do you mind yeah yeah sure, sure, sure. go ahead right. so if you're going dark harvest you always like there is no exceptions if you're dark harvest you always go blue smite. yeah yeah of course the the added utility of being able to smite people and proc Dark Harvest, making it like a 300 damage smite is insane. Like, mm -hmm. You can just kill people with it. Mm -hmm. um, now, if you're going red cane, I would never take red smite on blue cane ever, ever. Yeah, that's never, cool. never, never. Yeah, yeah. You, you always take blue on blue, yeah. I have been taking red smite on uh, Rast a lot more, but that is specifically because... There's a lot of unfavorable jungle matchups. A lot of unfavorable jungle matchups right now. Um, yes. Shit like Lee Sin, uh, Olaf. Oh, yeah. Man, who else is like really oppressive right now besides pretty much the entire cast of junglers? Um, Lee, Olaf, even Elise. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's good actually. Rengar, Ka. Into, yeah, into Elise is actually pretty good because if she... Um, uh, if she cocoons you and goes for the burst, you can red smite her and it'll prevent some of her burst, and then you can maybe win the trade after. More easily do all it, yep. Yeah. yeah, the the damage reduction from red smite is essential in 1v1s. It's why a lot of the meta right now are, are just champions that will just take red smite. Yeah. Shit like Lee, Olaf, yes. Elise. Sometimes you have I mean, to take these champions red... can Sometimes... take blue smite. Yeah. But they will definitely take red smite sometimes. Yeah, so, right, sometimes, sorry. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just want to take red smite just to match their red smite because you're not going to be able to 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 beat them otherwise. Fight them otherwise. It's yeah. actually just that done. Yeah. Like, also, I like to take like Olaf, red for smite. Example, Olaf, for example, is yeah. Like very, very, very. Like, also, very good of an example. If he has red smite, you don't beat him, especially if he has anti anti healing. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so basically, I like to take Ransom also into, like, heavy split pushers, like, if they have a Jax or a Fiora or, like, any of those champions. Oh, definitely. You will have a really yeah, yeah, hard yeah. time beating without Red Smite, unless you're, like, Gigafed. But with Red Smite, it allows you to actually to, to actually win those 1v1s if you play them correctly. So it's, uh, it's definitely really good if they have, like, heavy split pushing threats as well. I fucking hate Red Smite, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you're forced to take it, man. I'm so obnoxious. All right, sorry. I, I had to interject that. I have a lot no, of personal, agree. It is, personal it is, grudge about that. I... No, I agree. It is kind of unhealthy game design, but hey, I mean, we can we can build it. So and we kind of have to sometimes. So hey, what can I say? Talking about preventing burst, though, I would like to mention why 
Bestance is like a must build oh, item yeah. on Rust. You, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I just wanna, I just wanna say this real quick. You, you do not like, especially since the real, even b before the Death Dance rework, and that's just my personal play good. style. I would, I, I would all, I would always go Death Dance after Cleaver because that's just like my one v nine play style. But right now, as it stands right now, you should always take take Death Dance after Cleaver without any exceptions, pretty much. Exactly, it's the best item you can get on Rust besides after Black Cleaver. Cleaver. It yeah. has. All it, it has everything you need as a champion. It prevents you from getting bursted, which is very good for you as a drain tank. You get more room to play around with to get some healing done yeah. by attacking enemies. You get cooldown reduction that reduces the cooldown of your abilities so you can use them more often. You get damage which further on amplifies your healing that you get from using your abilities. And I'm pretty sure it also like gives AoE healing basically from your abilities. That's it. It heals on every ability. It's less for AOE, but it's still like really significant. Yeah, also, I mean, it makes your ult insane. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. okay. One it's, part. It's, one it's, part it's about the so ult. Good. Yeah. Good. One part about the ult though is that you always want to take care of the burn because this happens a lot if you're not experienced with Kane. You don't. You don't. Yeah. 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 yeah you don't. You do, you do not wait. You do not wait to be like like one HP or like ten percent HP before ulting. You always want to ult at like at least half HP if you have Death Dance because the burn will still keep mm -hmm. going while you're ulting, so you want to be re really mindful of that, because a lot of people say that, oh, Death Dance killed me in ulti, and, like, they blame the game. Like, no, you should be mindful of that and uh, 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 adapt accordingly, like, to the burn Oh, my damage. God. <laughs> that just reminds me, it was sort of a short story, is, like, I remember when I first started picking up the champ, and, like, when I first hit GM, like, the people were telling me, like, these, like, really, like, low elo game players were like, oh, man, Death Dance garbage item never build it it kills you and all it's like okay who told you that and they're like oh metaphor told me that and i was like right that guy who's a who's a con evelyn main and barely plays our champion right uh oh my god yeah i don't know it, anyway it is it, it's an insanely strong item the only instances where i would Holy not go death stance third on rost is if you're really behind or you don't think that the game is going to last long enough for you to build Death Stance. Yeah. Whereas a cheaper alternative that can do similar things, i.e. give you that like insane tankiness and you know make you last longer in fights is Guardian Angel. Okay. It's 2800 okay. gold. Guardian Angel after Cleaver, I will take if I have like the sheer amount of gold to build it. If you have like if you back with uh, 2.8k gold and like after Cleaver, getting Guardian Angel and like your head and shit is pretty much always the right choice, yeah. But it's really rare, but it happens sometimes. It's like that's how like little I will do something besides Death Stance third item. It's it, yeah. the synergy that the item gives you with the champion is, and it's yeah. it's almost like it was made for like us and Aatrox. Pretty much. It also gives us the opportunity to actually be as overpowered as mages through stopwatch. It's, 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 yeah, it's uh, just too good of an item. I can't, dude, I can't deal with any more stopwatches. I'm gonna lose my mind the next time I see one. Yeah, I got They just need to man. delete the item, man. It's, 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 it's literally it's been ruining good. leaks in season 8, like, fuck that shit, man. <sighs> a mistake that people do sometimes, now with the Death Stance rework, I've seen people in their builds go both Death Stance and Spirit Visage in yeah. non transcendence games. That's bad. Oh, you yeah. overcap CDR. I mean, it's not necessarily bad, but if it go if the game goes late game, you could be getting more value from other items like Guardian Angel, Sterics. Sterics, Sterics exactly. is so good. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's cheap. And, yeah. Like, yeah. Okay, yeah. Basically, if we want to go further into the build, like just to finish kind of like the Rust build, like up until the end, after. So g generically, after um, uh, getting Death Dance, you want to get Sterex. It's good into AD, it's good into AP, it's good into into most mixed comps that you're going to face. If you're against AP heavy, you can, you, you're you probably just going to go Visage, and then if they're like really AP heavy, yeah. then you can go like Maw, and that's usually with the Transcendence build. But in most cases, you will be getting, you will be getting Sterex, and then after Sterex, you will probably be getting GA, like, this is really the the more carry-oriented build. Like, not full lethality or anything, but this is usually what I would go... That that, that works most every game. That allows you to pretty much... To, 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 like, have a really high impact. And then, is there even an item slot after uh, after GA? No. Okay. Yeah, that, but that, that's basically your build. And as boots, well, obviously, boots is just... 
against heavy auto attackers and just AD your tabbies and into like heavy CC and AP you just go mercs like that's that's common knowledge usually. You don't want to go any you other boots. Talking, right. talking about boots though, talking about boots though, you don't always go for mobies on Shadow Assassin. That's also wrong. If the enemy team is like full AD or full AP, you definitely buy your boots to adjust to that to not get one shot. Yeah. If I I will I will point. If behind, yes. If you are ahead and snowballing yeah, on Shadow exactly. Assassins... I, I was going to say that, yeah. Like, yeah, you always ahead, go Mobies. Yeah, you always Being go able Mobies, to spread though. your lead across yeah. the map, yeah. just like, that is, is insane. Then, but if you're playing from, like, even to behind... Even ex yeah, yeah, you're not really able to make picks. Going Mobies and, is just troll. You yeah. Getting slowed to base boots movement speed after going in is is awful. Like anyone who's played the champion, especially because Q dash speed scales with move speed. So yeah, it's can, bad. This can actually make people dodge you, dodge your second Q if you're too slow while you're queuing. It's actually dumb. But uh, yeah, basically, um, sometimes if the game if you're snowballing and shit, but the game still goes to like very late, like maybe you failed out to close it or maybe like. It, 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 you you just couldn't close it fast enough. Then you can sell your uh, your mobies for like mercs or like tabbies or like whatever you need. When it just comes down to late game team fights and there's not many picks or like many uh, many instances where you can do much. So like mobies usually get get most of their value mid game. So I guess you can then sell mobies if you get to the very late game to build them uh, either tabbies or or mercs. But don't, don't yeah. Don't, I just want to address okay, like just don't fucking go sword shoes because that shit's garbage. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, I was gonna say I do want to address like a, a two things. One, sorcerer shoes troll. Like yes, our our passive is magic damage as shadow assassin, but you have to keep in mind it's it's magic damage based on our physical damage. Like it's yeah. not like we're amplifying any like huge pool of magic damage here it's gonna be like what is it like 30 to 40 percent of our, the our damage in like the first three seconds of combat yeah it's, really it, it's really nothing the the utility that other boots are going to give you is way more important and the other yeah. question that i've had asked a lot in gameplay discussion is armor items on rost um, I do think that this is important because there are instances where only, I will go specifically. Into, okay, only into full AD in my opinion. Only into full AD. Well, full AD, yes, but the more like the other situation that's very common is um specifically versus Yasuo and Trindamir. Yeah, yeah, if right they right. have yeah, crit, crit, if crit, they have yeah. Yasuo and Trindamir and a crit AD carry, I will almost all and like an AD jungler. Too, I right? will almost always go Randuin's that game after okay. Cleaver. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, uh... it is going to reduce so much damage. Like they, it, that's actually a stat on the item now. If you hover over the item in your inventory, it will tell you how much damage you've reduced from crits. Like I want you guys to play a game like that versus Yasuo or Trinibir in a crit eighty carry, and just look at how much damage it reduces. It's insane. Yeah, if they have like yeah, more than two crit crit based champions, mm -hmm. I would also add on the Randuin's Thorn Mail because most of crit focused champions they also tend to build some lifesteal items. Like just look at Yasuo, look at Trindamir, all of them go blood Yeah, that's that's, that's that's definitely a very hedge situation though. Exactly. Like I, yeah. I would never build like that's the only situation I'd ever build Thorn Mail in is versus yeah. three crit champions. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess the uh, the other champion that you could consider is Quinn. Quinn top lane builds crit, so if they like Quinn Yasuo crit AD carry. Um, otherwise, almost all other um, armor items are total trap. Don't build Dead Man's Plate. I see like it's oh, on yeah, like recommended shit. items yeah, and shit. It's garbage. Don't build Dead Man's Plate. Don't, don't, ever, is don't bad. ever do. Don't That's ever do so like bad. recommended items on Kane. Like that shit is straight up. They, they did actually change it recently, but no, it's it, it's fucking trolled. Don't, don't, don't ever do that. Yeah, it actually shows up different items now. I don't know. Wow. But it's, it's oh it's, it's still I yeah garbage. because what like one of the recommended items for base Kane is Sterix. I'm like, <laughs> what no, the fuck? No, no, I think it's it's the first recommended item. It tells you to rush it. Like yeah, it's like, so <laughs> stupid. If you're gonna go Shadow Assassin, bro, that's gonna be the most fucking useless shit ever, man. Plus, that's... like, on Rust as well, to be honest, you need the Black Cleaver. You yeah, that's really bad. Uh... 
I think that's pretty much it for builds, though. So we'll move on to pathing now, yeah. I guess, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you guys may know, uh, jungle camps post level nine, I believe, is the exact statistic on it. Uh, I actually have patched this up. Let me check it real quick. Give me one minute. Let's see. Where are we? Wasn't it from one point one twenty five percent to one thirty five percent, if I remember? Yeah, at levels nine plus. At level nine plus. Um. Yeah. So the buff on level nine plus camps is uh is really strong. If you are just nonstop knocking your camps down as soon as they come up, and you like rush getting to level nine camps, and then just clear level nine camps over and over over again, you will skyrocket ahead of the enemy jungler and see it. So. Mm -hmm. Typically, the path that I will take, um, I will always start on red buff. Uh, yeah, always. If I have a bot lane or a top lane that absolutely 100% must have prio, yeah. stuff like Renekton, stuff like Trindamir, uh, if you have like a cheese bot lane, and they absolutely must have the, the wave priority at level 1 so they can rush level 2, I will start Raptors. That is the only instance in which I will start Raptors. Yeah. Red buff, it just allows us to sequence our camps so much better. If you start Raptors, then you're really your only viable path is Raptors Red Krugs, and at Krugs, you're all the way across the map from your other camps, you so you'll typically just take it's it back. Yeah. 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 Um, so, I think Red Krugs Raptors into wolves and there's actually a trick you can do blue buff and gromp yeah. at the same time if you um if, if you're ever exactly around and, yeah. yeah if you're ever around and you watch my stream i do this almost every game uh it's so efficient just knocking those two camps down pretty much within five ten seconds of each other um and setting it up so it sequences gromp spawning just a little bit after wolves uh it's really strong if you plan on farming after that if you do that, then you will be at Crab at 317, which is two seconds after the Crab spawns. It lines up perfectly. Well, I... Well, so, like... And you're going to be I don't, I don't need... So, to be honest, if I don't do the... Because I don't do... I don't actually do this every game. Like, mostly what I'll do, actually, is I'll do a version of that where I just wait for my smite to come up, and then I'll walk to my Grump, and then I will smite it, and then I'll finish blue, and then transition to Grump. And I actually just finished that right as as Crab spawns. But you want to avoid doing that, because, it, it like, doing the the, the clear, the clear where it's, like, uh, Grump and blue... It gets you very low HP, so into invaders that will look to invade you at your blue buff. That's true, yeah. It is very bad. You will get killed like 900% of the time. So you you gotta you gotta watch out for your matchup, like Rex side, like any champion. And you maybe want to place a preemptive ward in case to watch out for that. Because if you get invaded in that spot, it's so bad for you. You can lose like two camps. I died in a row so many times there, man. So yeah. many times. Like, so. like be like be really careful when doing that. Like know your matchup, maybe place a preemptive ward. Because like getting invaded at your blue buff, you can get away from it most of the time if you're just doing one camp. But if you're doing two the both at the same time, it gives you some efficiency, but you get so low they just give a free kill if you get invaded there. So just just watch out. Yeah. And not only will you give a kill, give you will camps. also lose two camps. Yeah, which like, is like, that's that's GG camp. for us. Yeah, that's, you can't yeah. come back from that. Yeah. If you ever see an early game jungler doing that to you at your blue buff, without priority, you just just piss off. Go somewhere else. Back. Don't mm -hmm. stick around there. Yeah. So yeah, th definitely there are games where it is bad, but... If yeah. you know your matchups and you can get away with it, it can be good. Okay, but so... it's definitely, like, if you get punished for it, it is devastating. But like, yeah, basically... So when... devastating. Yeah, exactly. But when it comes to general pathing, like, pretty much just like Mike said, usually, most of the games, you just want to full clear, straight up. Like, uh, you go from, like, you just do red, Krugs, raptors, wolves, blue, gromp, and then you do your crab. And most of the time, actually... You're one of the few the few junglers that can full clear and get a crab at level four. Like not a lot of junglers clear fast enough to be able to do that. And that level advantage they get level four can actually make you win a lot of duels that you shouldn't win. For example, level level four cane beats level three Kha'Zix, for example. So that's something. To, yes. That so that's something to to watch out for actually. So there's and a lot of. It's one of the only times you will ever beat that champion. So. Yeah, exactly. Like it's actually a really bad matchup for you. 
but this is also why you want a full clear because it allows you to be if Kha'Zix is just like oh it, it, it's a cane I just beat him like level 4 cane just beats Kha'Zix so you can see so it's it's a very good uh it's a very good um, uh, strategy just full clear, but in, in general you just want full clear, you don't have many options, You uh, as a fast clearer you can't really spawn faster, like obviously there are variations, like if there's for example after you clear your red side, there's the mid lane that you can gank for, uh, it, you can transition gank mid if there's like a good opportunity for it, or if level 1, you have like a Nautilus or some shit, you invaded, you burned bot lane flash or some shit, I, I'll always do like my red side, then I'll, do, I'll go for a gank bot, that can actually work too, but then you have to watch out for the enemy jungler taking your. Uh, yeah, taking at, at your that point, side. at that point, if you gank bot lane, and this is specifically if you like level two, level three gank, yeah, um, and you suspect or you had a ward down, and you see the enemy jungler go into your blue side and take your camps, it's always, always, always better to just vertical jungle. Yeah, there yeah. are so little matchups that our champion wins. Um, that going and contesting your t your camps can just get you killed. Yeah, pretty much. Well, like the same thing that I mentioned yeah. earlier. If there's like an early, early game focused jungler on your blue buff, you're you're very much gonna get killed if there's no priority around yeah. you. Like okay, so when it comes to Kane, usually you can outsmite most of your, most of your opponents because your Q smite burst damage is insane. So like most of the time you will win the cr like. If you can contest camps, like Q smite the camp and then like E away, I will almost always do that because you, you win most smite fights. Like if you just combine your Q and your smite, your Q, both parts of your Q at the same time do like 260 damage. Yeah. 260 damage to camps and then your smite, you always win. It, it, it's, it's, it's even better than Master EQ on that matter. So like, you yeah, just... I would say the only champs who really beat us at that are like Ka with Isolation Q and Lee with Execute yeah, yeah, Q. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but okay, but if you transform into Rost, Rost Q is actually even stronger than that because of the yeah. the, per, per, the percent added. But yeah, basically, I will only contest camps if I can actually get away with doing that and then E over the wall. But obviously, you don't want to like risk your life unnecessarily. But yeah, like just know that as Kane, you can you can actually win most smite fights when it comes especially like in objective fights blue cane is a, is even better for that because you can wq smite at the same time and like nobody can really match that burst so it's extremely good but yeah it's just a nice thing to to be reminded of like you can win most smite fights like don't be afraid just walk into the enemy jungle as they're doing raptors q into the raptors smite it away and then just j j just e away like sometimes you can do these things but obviously just be careful of of like what they're capable of doing at the same time but yeah yeah, if you're going for like smite fights like that, the the thing that you're more worried about, whether than securing the camp, is can I live yeah, after yeah. I take yeah, this yeah. camp? Yeah, like your yeah. only escape option will be E, and uh, that if you will. Smite it, yeah. yeah, and if if you don't get hit by the enemy while you're doing that, then that's great. But if you get hit, then your E represents getting over a wall and gaining some HP. And if that's enough for you to surviving after, then cool. If not, then you should probably not go for it. Like it's. Like, yeah, it's very situational. But that's... Pretty much pathing is just, as we said, it's pretty much just full clear all Fine. the time. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Just full clear. Don't focus on for forcing ganks. That's, like, the worst thing you can do as Oh, Kane. yeah, don't Forcing do that. ganks. Like, people think that Kane is an early ganker because you want to get as many orbs as possible. But, like, that, that, that actually doesn't make any sense because... The, the more the game advances, the more orbs you gain per hit. So you can actually yeah. just get your full form by one fight at 10 minutes. And like, inting, yeah. inting, inting for the first 5 minutes of the games to get orbs is just... It's just complete trolling. Like, it's terrible. Gank, it's terrible. And also, You're gonna be like even, at, 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 at one third if even, you just do even, that even within if you the first five end, minutes. Even if you just waste your time, you're like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Even if you're like, just like, oh, I'll gank top. Even if we don't get it, we maybe like we get a flash or like I, I get a bunch of orbs. Like, no, it's not worth it because you just lose so so much so much of that efficiency. You could be clearing your camps. You could be counter jungling. You could Getting be doing XP, objectives. Yeah. You can be doing so many things. But like, only go for ganks as Kane if you know that it's if you know that it's basically just guaranteed to work. And actually, Kane is one of the like you can actually just avoid wards by going through some walls and shit. Like what I like to do, like I'll I'll I'll, I'll, I I'll say it on blue side. Yeah, like like if yeah, like yeah. I'll say it on blue side. Like you just wanna 
like use the wall like behind their tower pretty much to get through it and you, you pretty much avoid like every single ward by doing that and most people don't ward accordingly against kane but like, like because like they don't nobody really faces that champ like nobody plays kane so most people are yeah really everyone just everyone just it. everyone just wards the basic bushes yeah, yeah and they don't but, actually check the pits yeah okay and so the pits like, like uh, the pits yeah. are like basically the strongest points where you can yeah. gank from or the or like the opposite walls yeah. you are never going to walk into like the basic bottling bush that leads to river you are never going Going to walk yeah, into yeah. that as Kane, so it's pointless. But like people obviously was to keep warding it. But yeah, like Kane actually isn't that bad of a ganker because a lot of opportunities of ganks you get that other junglers, even like really strong early game junglers, wouldn't get those gank opportunities because they can go through walls like you can. So actually, you get a lot more opportunities. But Kane's weakness is more in the execution of ganks. Like you need more setup. From your bot laner, from your top laner or mid laner to make ganks work, but you create more opportunities. So that's essentially yeah, the only the other ever. champion, in my opinion, that can match the gank opportunities that we have is Zach. That's it. Or maybe yeah. Rexai, but yeah, Rexai as well. Champions that can like really, really easily go over walls. Like Zach's E range when it's even at like level two or three is is insane. Yeah, it's it's really fucking nuts. Yeah. Mm. But yeah. But... Um. Is there anything else I think we should talk about, about matchups now because there's there's a lot to talk about with this. Yeah, and by yeah. a lot to talk about. Yeah. Yeah, I by, mean, by a lot of about to talk, I mean Ban Graves. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I I would actually like to mention that. Like just the basic bans for both forms. If you're planning to go Rost, ban kiting champions like Kindred or Graves. Graves. If you're Graves. gonna go Shadow Assassin, Graves. Graves, I guess, yeah. yeah just big Graves. Big Graves. Big Graves. Graves. Always big Graves. Bad Graves every game. Okay, so the ban priority is basically like Graves every single game. If your teammate ban yeah. Graves, or if you have a teammate that's going fucking Graves stop so you can't ban it, like whatever the fuck, then then you would you would ban Kindred. And then after Kindred, what do you guys ban? Actually, I don't even I don't ever get to the point of like I'm not able to ban Rengar. Graves. Rengar, I hate that champion Rengar. Fuck Rengar. Okay, I, I really I think hate Rengar or Kazakhs. Okay, so I hate Rengar. Uh, Kha'Zix is a match chub that I, I usually you can, can't you can outplay. Beat him as... Yeah, I can't yeah, 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 beat like, him. But... but it's really annoying, yeah. With form, obviously you can beat all of those champions, but like early game, if a Kha'Zix invades you, you're gonna be kinda cooked. Yeah. I hate Rengar. Yeah, no, 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 like Rengar is definitely I hate Rengar. Worse. Yeah, Rengar is definitely worse than Alright, I, I, I'll even... explain real quick oh, yeah. why the Rengar matchup is unwinnable. Um... So yeah, he has absolutely. more sustain damage. If like if you go red, he's just gonna kill you in a long fight. You can't actually beat him. And if you go blue, you will never actually <laughs> kill him because of his W. Yeah. You will you will he's burst just him. Heal it all back then. Yeah, he will lose like 90% of his HP and then he hits the W key twice. He's, like full. he's full HP, you have yeah. nothing up, and then he just kills you. Yeah, like it's the only awful. time Yeah, like the only time you can beat Rangor as Shadow Assassin is if you're if you're like extremely fed. So you one shot him once, like to, uh, like you either just one shot him before he can W, or you put him at ten percent HP and then you ult, and then you one shot him again, but then he may just have like fucking stopwatch around now. Like it's yeah, it's, really it's hard. like the Kha'Zix matchup is really bad. I think it's winnable as it's Blue Kane definitely. Yeah, it's winnable as Blue Kane. Basically, um, yeah, like how that matchup goes is if you are able to ult him. Before he gets the edge on you, like if he just goes in invis and just hits you first, you're kind of gonna get bursted. Yeah, then down. you're done. You're but if you can, dead. but if you can ult him before he bursts you, you can usually you can usually win there. Yeah. And yeah. next to your E, you should be able to surprise him more than he does you most. Yeah. Of the time. Well, of course, like uh, if he yeah. walked into a bush or some shit. Yeah. If you're a red K though, you lose that matchup 100 percent of the time. You, yeah. you do not beat Kha'Zix. I, I, want, I want to make that very clear, because I saw people talking about this in the Discord earlier, where they're like, oh, if you go red, you just beat him. That's not no, true. Impossible. Um, he, his ult gives him movement speed and stealth, which means that if he's playing correctly, I, and again, this is assuming both players play the fight correctly, exactly. you will never hit him with your W, and if you're isolated, that means his Q is dealing, what, like upwards of 800, 1,000 damage? Yeah. Like, you just get shit on. You have to, like, smite ult and hope that you can run ult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much smite ulting is, like, key against Kha'Zix, like, when playing both forms, because otherwise you're just gonna get killed. And also, he can just straight up one-shot you, even if he... If he goes, like, full lethality, even if you're red king, he's still gonna one-shot you, because most of your tankiness comes from hitting your abilities. And if Kha'Zix exactly. knows, how to, knows how to plus R, 
you you can't you, you can't you can't like sustain off him. He's just gonna one shot you straight up. So like it doesn't. It's the the doesn't other work. thing about this matchup because it's becoming more popular that I want to talk about is Bruiser Kazix. You, um, you never beat that. Never yeah, you can never beat Bruiser Kazix. Man. All right, yeah. this is this is a lot more popular, and you will see this definitely at mid to higher elos. Exactly. Um, if people go Red Smite Conqueror <laughs> Cleaver Bruiser Kazix, you do not shit, beat that man. champion. It's impossible. Um, he is going to do. Like twice as much damage as you, and be just as tanky. If you're I would red, say he also beats Shadow Assassin as Bruiser Kazix. No, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, you, you got the red smite. You got the you red can, smite. You can't kill him. Yeah, red smite is OP. Yeah, Damn. and you cannot build red um, smite on blue like ever. Yeah, some of the other more common matchups that we'll see are Zach's really popular. You eat Zach okay. for breakfast Zach. on uh, yeah, Red Yeah, okay, so you shit, you shit on Zach, but I actually really struggle against that matchup because Zach, play against Zach, you don't play against Zach, you play against your own team. That's who you play yeah. against when you play against Zach. And that yeah. usually leads to me losing because there's no way you can ever match his pressure. At some point, you can't even kill him. Like, even if you play Rust... I just feel like he's so hard to kill even late game. Yeah, like he, so dumb. I mean, after late game, yeah. Makes yeah. yeah. Absolutely unkillable. Yeah. Mid game, you done it. It's really it's, hard. If, say, both of you are even. And then, like, it, I would say, like, the way that Zach plays out, it, obviously, versus Shadow Sass, you just ignore the champion. Like, yeah, you're you never going to kill him anyway. You kill As Ross, the way that the matchup plays out is that you'll win early game. If you proc his passive, you one shot it. Like, you yeah, just wait for them to get closer, and then because they're considered yeah. minions, you annihilate it with your Q. Yeah, like, you you'll it actually one, kill so. it in one Q. Yeah. Um, mid game, you'll still typically beat him because his second item is going to be like a spirit message, which is nothing against you, pretty yeah. much. It's yeah, no mitigation. Yeah. It's um, a, it's, and then late game, you just kind of have to ignore him too because you're not going to be able to yeah, kill him. It's, you it's you a, can use him as like an. Yeah, you can use him as like yeah. a health reset with your. It's ult one or of something. the few matchups that you actually beat preform and late game you just get shit on by. It's actually so weird. Like you beat him preform, um, he can never fight you. But yeah, no, I don't think yeah. there's anything else than that. Like, like except maybe nah, Master Yi beats you at even early game. So yeah. Yeah, Master Yi is a champion that you'll never fight if if that cha if that. If they have even a semblance of a brain, like two IQ to rub together, yeah, exactly. uh, you'll lose that regardless of what form, regardless yeah. of if you're ahead or not. You you, you don't win. Yeah. If he like, doubles your ultimate, you basically deal no ulti damage. And if he doubles your um, if he yeah, if he Qs your W, you lose. Yeah, and if he that. if he meditates your ult, you lose. Exactly. So. Like like the only thing against Master Yi is like if he Qs you. Then you just like if you're playing Ross, then you just W backwards. You never W forward because Master Yi lands behind you when he queues. Yeah, this you. is actually a thing. Just to to segue something, really this am. is a thing with also Zeth, champions think, right? that have a targeted dash. All champions that have a targeted dash, including Zed Ultimate, they yeah, Zed always Ultimate. land behind you. Yeah, Zed, so, Irelia, Master Yi, all of that. Shit. Diana, Zed, Diana. Uh, Fizz. They will always land behind you, so keep that in mind. Well, F Fizz the Yasuo is... even will always go through you. Yeah, but Fizz and Fizz and Yasuo are kind of different dashes because they kind of over overgo like the distance. But yeah, still like most targeted dashes, you will want to W backwards once once they actually go through. Like some people, like even if it doesn't work, like maybe they predict it, and even if you look like an idiot, it doesn't matter. Because, like, you actually do want to do that every single time. Yeah, it's the correct play to do, even if you look like, you know, you have no idea what you're doing. Yeah, because if if they actually dash on you and you W forward, you're you're basically just going to die. In it, it's scenarios. a whiff, 100% sure, yeah. of the time. If you have no CC against those champions, if they dodge your W, it's over. Oh, yeah, basically, if Master Yi dodges your W, you're just dead. Like, straight up. Yeah, you're just dead. yeah. Like, you can temporize with your ulti, but what happens is that you just meditate, so you don't even get ulti, ulti damage off, and then he just, and then he just like, runs you down, basically. And the then... only situations where, where I would ever fight a Master Yi is if, he, if, I, if I know he uses W just now. Even... But other than if that, W's on CD, if ult is on CD, those I would consider yeah. picking okay, fights. So, with everything yeah. up, 
But the thing is that against Master Yi, it's not up to you to do the move. It's up to him to do it. Because like actually, Master Yi is one of yeah, my it's... Uh, Master Yi is one of my secondary champions. So I will actually pick him into Kane. And sometimes I'll just pick him because like I, I like playing the champion. So I have a lot of experience on Master Yi. I have probably like 500k points on him. So you want to wait for Master Yi to make the move basically. Like he will always look to like like kill your entire team or do some shit. So basically in team fights, team fights is usually where or Master Yi wants to shine. He can also play a split push style, but usually most people don't do like split pushing style Master Yi. I only see like Danny generally do that. But basically, once Ma it comes down to team fighting with Master Yi, that's usually the phase that you kind of get to interact with him. Is that you wait for him to queue in, and you can guess which targets he queues to because it's the first target that it because like Master Yi, you know, like when he queues, when he alpha strikes, it will like go ching 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 targets. ching on uh, multiple yeah. targets. Well, the first target that it goes to is the target that he's alpha striking to. So you want to prepare your W to just W him out of alpha, and if that Behind occurs, that yeah. and if that occurs, your and your team has like more than one IQ, literally, then he just gets one shot basically. So you want to look out for that. You want you just basically just want to sit back and peel. Same with Shadow Assassin, actually, because like you can't play like a counter peeling style as Shadow Assassin, where it's like if they have a threat like Master Yi or something, and then they queue in, you can just prepare your burst and just like pretty much one shot like Master Yi out of queue or like any other assassin that's that's looking to dive. You can actually kind yeah. of assassinate in certain scenarios if you feel like you can't really play around their backline because like they have maybe stopwatches or maybe their backline isn't just that strong like maybe their fucking adc is already 0 10 and not doing anything so and their assassin is really fed so then you counter assassinating is actually really good because they're doing the commitment and you get free free land on killing them so it's actually that's actually something to watch for as well so i i will say if you're playing in low elo, in my opinion, every game ban Master Yi. Or Udyr. I think Udyr can also be pretty annoying. Udyr can also be a good ban. Um, the uh, Graves don't ban, ban <laughs> The Graves ban, in my opinion, only... Plat above, I would say. Plat, yeah, Plat above. Plat above, I will say. Yeah, Plat Whereas, above. like, yeah. I think low low elo, golden yeah, below, Master Yi, Master Yi represents it's a, it's a, a not, much bigger threat. Yeah, it's not even to match. Like, sure, it's a bad matchup for you, first of all. But it's it's your team, literally. Yeah, your your team is just going to run into him, give him like eight kills, and he's going to come out at base with like twelve minutes with a completed rage blade. Yeah, yeah. Th th that's the thing, right? Is that Master Yi, like even in low elo, even a low elo player can have a really easy time with Master Yi in low elo because like the champion is just it requires team coordination. To people play don't again. Like, yeah. yeah. People people don't time their CC abilities. In, yeah, it doesn't like, matter. Elo. Like you don't have yeah, to be exactly. good at Master Yi in low elo. It doesn't matter. Like now, if you get into higher elos, you actually have to be good at the champion. But like in lower elo, you always want to ban him, even if you know how to play against them. If your team doesn't know how to play against Master Yi and you're the only one who can, it doesn't matter. Like unless you're like really fed. Yeah, he's just gonna shred your entire team, and then when you're the last one left, he's just gonna be like, and now it is your turn. So yeah, like if you're golden uh, below, just ban that champion every game, pretty much. Uh, some of the other meta matchups that I want to okay. discuss uh, that are like really popular. Elise, maybe? Elise, yes. Yeah. Um, uh, Elise, you could go either form into. I like um, going Shadow Assassin I, pers Elise. I personally like red form into Elise because... So, uh, <laughs> she cues you like if you have tenacity her stun will wear off before she goes through an entire rotation of spider form q on you so you can actually time a w so that when she lands on you with spider form q she instantly gets knocked up but mm. the reason why i personally like you can definitely go blue into her and, and it would be fine like it would be totally fine yeah. the reason why i don't like it is because build on is really fast yeah yeah, if there's a lot of AD threats on your team, then she's just going to build jungle item and then Zanyas, and then you're yeah, like... Yeah, and then you're kind of... <laughs> you're you're just Zanyas, kind of fuck, man. Yeah, and the problem is that she so... has Zanyas, and she has her E. The only reason why I like going Shadow Assassin into her is that you can, like, easily bait it out from her, and then you can look to kill her again. Like, it's just... As Rost, it's kind of... You just pretty much get kited. So like, you don't really interact with her as Rost. I feel like you get more... You, you interact more with her if you play Shadow Assassin, but then it's it's still hard. Like, overall, it's not a good matchup. W whatever form you go, it's just not really a good matchup. The way you play you play this matchup is basically, like, 
you just hope you just try to track her like it's pretty much against any heavy ganking early game jungler you just want to track them ping your teammates ward for them and just kind of be farming meanwhile steal steal their camps on the opposite side of the map while they're ganking on the other side or maybe counter gank because actually kane is better than elise at extended trades especially if you have conquer you actually beat elise 1v1 like if you have conquer yeah. as base form kane you beat her in extended trades so you can actually even invade her if you have prio the only problem with elise is that she applies a lot of pressure on your laners and obviously she can also invade you with, with her laners and shit but Actually, it's not the worst matchup because you beat her in extended fights. And counter ganking against Elise is actually very good. Again, then against maybe like Olaf, like counter ganking into an Olaf doesn't do much. Like you'll just get killed along. But if you counter gank Elise and she wasted all her spells into something else, and you just come in and she hasn't like really gotten a kill yet, then you you're usually gonna win because you're much better in the extended trade, especially if you have conquer. So uh, Ellie's isn't the worst matchup, and there are things that you can actually do against her early game, and it's more about knowing like the the fights that you can take, and like yeah, fight... Elise is definitely one of those matchups yeah. where like it's more you're not versus Elise, you're versus your team. Yeah, yeah. like exactly. if your it's team like just Zach. dies, to it's like it's like you can't do anything. Yeah, it's like Zach. The only difference is that you outscale Elise, and Zach just outscales you and i i guess it's 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 a very di it's very different matchups but they kind of it's kind of that similar concept like you're more against your team and you have to ping them off because you're not really like they're not really looking to interact with you because you went yeah, they're just against looking elise to... and you just shit on zach so yeah it's more it's more like counter ganking against the least counter ganking against zach is also pretty good but it uh, it depends. Like uh, Zach. If, yeah, if you go out. into Zach when his aftershock is down, he's he's just like fresh meat, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, just exactly. gonna die. Yeah, like if he brought out um, he's just gonna die. But I I would rather face Elise than Zach, just because Zach actually outscales you, while Elise just becomes useless if it gets to that stage. Another matchup to discuss is the Olaf matchup, also pretty popular. Yeah, Olaf um, is very AIDS. In L yeah, Olaf is just very AIDS. You lose the only, like as Rust, you beat him. If you have Rustmite until he gets anti healing items. Once he once he gets those, you don't want to engage. Yeah. Like the problem with Olaf is that he will like if it's a good Olaf player, or even just like uh, somebody with just a decent rate, he will remove you out of the game before you get to do anything. Like there there is like yeah. Olaf oh, just walk into something. your jungle level three and no, slaughter you. That, that's the problem with Olaf is that He's one of the few champions, or maybe the only champion, that actually clears faster than you. His clear speed is faster than yours. And just because of that alone, plus all the other... Plus the fact that he's the probably the most oppressive early game threat, like, he just outvalues you by so much. He can full clear before you full clear, meet you at crab, or just invade your red... Your blood, like, he has so many options to just fuck you up. Like, it's unbelievably annoying as a matchup. He's actually the champion that I would ban after Kindred, straight up. Like, yeah. I, I, I hate playing... Like, I would rather play against Rengar than Olaf, because actually, there are other things that I can do against Rengar, but against Olaf, you just hope that, that you outscale him. But like in in high elo, like in low elo, you don't you you can't get away with not banning Olaf because they'll not apply as much pressure. They probably don't know don't know what they're doing anyway. So, but but uh, in higher elo, banning Olaf, especially because that champion is so popular, is really a really good option because you will get slaughtered. You have very little options unless your laners have prio and can help you. Like if you have a draft where you have like a town mid lane and like a Renekton top lane, like just every lane has prio. Then you could pick Kane into Olaf and expect them to rotate and just like kind of catch him off. But if you don't have Prio and you're facing Olaf, you just pretty much you should just lose the game on paper, yeah. It, it, the other game. thing is like even if you have like weak laners and both of you come to stop Olaf, there there is a non-zero chance that he just kills both of you. Yeah. <laughs> like like actually will just kill you both from full HP. Yeah, yeah. his healing is just going to surprise him. Yeah, his yeah. passive and his W works. Yeah. It's it's insane. I have to step yeah. away real quick. Just one minute, guys. You guys yeah. you, you guys want to talk a little bit about why Graves is the champion that you you should ban over every other champion including including uh, Olaf? He gains armor. 
when he is right like he can kite you with the z the, and he has yeah. his w which is just so annoying like, it's so annoying both, you usually have to okay. bring your q to get out of the w yeah and the, then like <laughs> yeah, sorry, go ahead. Right, you, 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 you can go first you can go first okay, since yeah. you actually so, brought it up yeah so basically against graves the problem is that both forms absolutely suck massive cock into him you cannot do anything to graves as red because graves it's just gonna have armor and death dance as tankiness sources, and you and so like you're and you're, range, yeah, and range. So like you cannot do anything against him as raw. You don't shred him. You shred HP as raw, and I guess you shred some armor with black cleaver. But against graves, it doesn't matter because he will out heal it. He will destroy every single time. And as shadow assassin, he, he's just too tanky, and he's gonna build a red smite too. So it's it's terrible once you get both forms. You can actually win the early game. Even if you win the early game against Grace, which you should never, you you he just actually fucks you once you get form. Like it's actually really fucking stupid. And then um, the problem is he's also like a really invader kind of jungler. He just kind of invades you and shits on you. And like it's just a really really terrible matchup that outscales you, beats you early game, beats you mid game, beats you every single stage of the game. Like you cannot do anything against Grace. Olaf, you can outscale him as Rust as rust if you go red smite and there are certain options you can do and if your laners have prior it's okay against graves like graves is also a farm heavy jungler that is looking to carry later on into the game so like and he outscales you he actually just does what you do but just better like overall Graves is just a better champion than kane i think and he like it's it's just really it's just really stupid like, you just want to ban him every game pretty much like he just has so many edges over you Mm. But yeah, that's basically the Grace matchup and why you should ban everything. You should ban Grace every game unless you're golden below, then you just ban Master Yi because yeah, Master Yi. So uh on the topic of matchups, is there any other matchup that we can discuss? Like any Maybe Nidalee? Maybe Nidalee. I can kind of see Nidalee as as a semi-hard uh, matchup. Nidalee, okay, so Nidalee is entirely dependent on the Nidalee players' skill. You don't see many good Nidalee players. In low elo, um, you're never going to see a good Nidalee player. And in high elo, usually Nidalee players are one trees, but I don't see her very often. But basically, if it's a good Nidalee player, you're fucked. And you kind of... Flashback to skill. Assassin Mains. Eric is losing to, to, to a Nidalee man. Oh, yeah, I remember the Assassin's Creed. Yeah, we actually lost to Nidalee mains. Yeah. yeah, well, perfect, yeah. Like, Eric just got completely slaughtered. And, like, Eric is, like, Challenger Kane main, and, like, Mabari is, like, Master Tier slash D1 Nidalee one trick. Yeah, he just got fucking shit on. Like, yeah. it's a really, really, really bad matchup. But you should never ban Nidalee, because there's maybe... There's, you... there's other chat. There's other ch chats yeah. that are, like, yeah. just worse matchup. But the thing ones. is that you never see it, and I can count on my finger the amount of good Nidalee players in uh, on, on this fucking server, right? So you, should, you, you shouldn't ban Nidalee. If you see Nidalee in low elo, chances are you just win the game because they, they don't know what they're yeah, doing. Yeah, they're just, they're, they're just not going to be able to hit their cues, man. No, it's not, yeah, I would just, I apply the right amount of pressure. I had champion is just really, yeah, yeah, you need to have a really high APM and like play it perfectly to even make it viable. But uh, yeah, literally essentially a really terrible matchup, but you outscale it and you actually win extended fights. It's not even that bad of a matchup because you win extended fights against her, especially if you have conquer. If she misses her spear, you can actually counter gank her by that same philosophy. It's kind of like, uh, what was it? What was the, the other matchup? Um, that you beat, yeah, like like Elise, kind of like uh, you beat her in extended trades that she doesn't like Q. Like oh. it's not a bad matchup, but yeah, Nidalee you shouldn't worry about because there's there's only like maybe five players that can actually play her in the server. So yeah, okay, I think I'm... one last welcome back. I think one last champion that we're that we're that we're just supposed to address because there's a lot of people actually banning him, and I think you both know him. It's it's Lee Sin. Lee Sin, I don't Ooh. think he deserves a ban spot. Okay, I honestly don't not. think so. Yeah, yeah. There's okay. just worse champions. Kane, Kane beats him if Lee Sin misses Q. Early game. Uh, Late game, you beat him straight up. If Lee misses Q early game, but he still has his W, mm, I, I, I don't know if you actually beat him. I mean, 
it, what do you I think, think it's Mike? doable. I think it's doable if you manage to if, eat. Okay, if you have HP kill, advantage. Okay, so the thing about Kane is that also you will have HP advantage on most junglers because you have pretty much the, the healthiest clear in the game. So it can actually allow you to win a lot of matches, including the fact that you get level 4 uh, by full clearing before crab and you will pretty much be full HP or almost full HP So that will allow you to win a lot of matchups even Lee Sin, yeah, if he's like yeah, really low Like that healthy that healthiness inside your jungle can allow you to apply more pressure into the enemy junglers So that's something that's also really important But uh, Lee Sin is a champion that I actually used to perma ban before they before they buffed the indirectly buffed graves but with death dance because Lee Sin has such a high pick rate and it's such an AIDS matchup that just because of his pick rate and the fact you see him every game, I used to perma ban him. Now it's not worth banning him anymore. But uh, he has a really high pick rate though, especially in higher ELOs. So you should you should at least learn how to play that matchup specifically because it's it's a matchup that you're gonna see a lot. But as, as far as playing against Lee Sin, um uh, it's just kinda it's just kind of like most early game genres, right? You just want to look to farm. He doesn't invade as well. and uh, As you... others, yeah. Yeah, as well as other champs, like Rek'Sai, like other stuff. Um, uh, and you just kind of wait until he gets to that stage of the game where he just becomes a kick bot, pretty much. like. Yeah, then you just you, you just straight up bully him as yeah. Rast. And as Shadow Assassin, you're able to one-shot him just like any other AD carry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Except maybe Vayne and Kaiser. Yeah, he's like, I just play your play My your problem game. with the matchup stems from, and, like, you have to understand, like, where I'm, the experience that I'm speaking from is, like, playing against Masters plus Lee Sin players. Yes. Yeah, um, is that the champion is just so insanely overloaded. Like, that champion yeah. straight up does everything. Yeah, that's why Anything that you need a jungler to do, Lee Sin does it. And chances are, he does it more than, he does it better than like more than half the jungle cast as well exactly and um the junglers that do things better than Lee Sin do not do any of the other shit that Lee Sin can do like he's just so versatile so my problem with the matchup stems from the fact that if the Lee Sin is good you get shit on early game you yeah. get yeah. dumpstered yeah. Yeah. it's almost Olaf tier bad um especially because like even if you use your E to go over wall he's just gonna follow you yeah and, and like and then you have to flash and yeah, then yeah. he's either gonna double you over the wall or he's just gonna Q you and then he's yeah, yeah. still gonna have his W free yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. I think that you beat the champion red uh, when you get red form if you're even if he's ahead you yeah, might quite legitimately just die to a short trade and then Q kick Q. Yeah, Q or Q. Yeah, if, he, if he's might actually actually just feel okay, like if, to be. if basically he's able to trade with you, like he's fed, right? And he's able to trade with you to half HP, and then he Q or Qs you before you get to ult, you're dead, basically. Yeah. yeah. You, you need to and watch because out for the, that. the important thing to remember about kick is that kick is not only is it a knockback, it's, it's actually a stun. a stun. It's such a long um, fucking stun. As soon as the animation of kick begins, you're actually stunned. You're you can't you're do anything. You're locked into it, yep. Um, uh, it's both, it's both, I think. Okay, you're like, able... Yasuo, you, okay, uh, you're actually... works. Okay, yeah, both. while... So, actually, he has a... He, Lee Sin Kick has a cast time, so you can ult while he does it, but the only time you're gonna do that is out of luck. Like, there's no way for you to actually predict that. Uh, by mechanic. And like theoretically, you could QSS the stun and ult him while you're flying in the air, but like you're not gonna build a QSS against Lee Sin for that. So like there's <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. You don't it's just go QSS, I think, except if it's like a fucking full CC comp. Yeah. Yeah. The so like line. my problem with the matchup is that if the Lee Sin player is good, you will experience hell on earth. Uh, if the Lee Sin player is bad, you're just, like, they're gonna just lay down and die at, like, 15 minutes, and you're gonna roll over Okay, them. it's it's kind of like Nidalee, right? It's similar to Nidalee. Yeah, like, if, if Nidalee is good, it's one Nidalee. of the hardest matchups in yeah. the game, bar none. Yeah. Yeah. If she's bad, you then just, you you win. just you win. win. They, so. the, the other thing is that if a Nidalee player mm -hmm. can't play Nidalee, they lose the game for their team, basically. Like, it's it's just that dumb. But if they know how to play, then it's a really, really terrible matchup. But Lee Sin has... As much higher of a pick rate, so that's why I would also ban him. Now you just ban Grace because Grace meta, but like, 
before that I would just perma ban Lee Sin every game. Like it's a it's a really hard matchup. And but in low elo you shouldn't worry about Lee Sin because nobody knows how to play against them. It's kinda the same as mid Lee. The only difference is that He's more versatile, I would say. Like, he still can become a kick bot late game, while Nidalee doesn't do anything late game if she's not fed. Except throw spears that everybody's gonna dodge anyway. But, um, aside from that, yeah, in low you shouldn't worry. In higher elos, I would put him on ban priority list after, like, Graves, Kindred, Graves, Kindred. Olaf. Yeah. Olaf, I think, is still, is still a worse matchup than Lee Sun. Because even if Lee Sin has more versatility, Olaf just removes you out of the game, but with like such brutality, like, nah, dude, it's yeah. just way too hard. To keep in mind that Olaf also outscales Lee Sin, I'm pretty sure. He's more useful late game, uh, rather than late, I so... I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't think so. Olaf actually is... You don't think so? Unless he's really... Okay, unless Olaf is really fed, he gets kited and outscaled really hard in the late game phase. Like, Olaf is not really good in the late game phase. Lisa, late game can be a kick bot. And if he manages to land an insect late game and get a pick, he can usually yeah. secure a win by doing that. While Olaf just gets kited, just gets outscaled. Like, I think, okay, when it comes to scaling, Olaf's scalings are probably better. But when it comes to, like, overall strength, Leeson has more options and it's just stronger late game because he can be a kickball. True, well, he has a purpose, yeah. Yeah, yeah he, he has, has a purpose, well, that's Olaf true. just kind of walks to you in teamfight, gets kited, dies, dies to Red Kane that is outscaling him anyway. Like, Olaf doesn't want to make it the late game. Like, he can become very useless. But, uh, but Leeson still has options. So, yeah. That's basically... Do you guys okay. want to talk about the Kindred matchup? Uh, the Kindred matchup? Not really. I don't want to relive any nom flashbacks, but I feel like uh, for posterity, <laughs> we should discuss it. I mean, um, uh, like, Kindred has the same issue that Graves does in that she is yeah. a relatively healthy ranged champion she that will, like, yeah, like, outscales you, kites you. She's pretty much everything that you hate. You can't she, get to her. And she gets even more cutting up. But, yeah. Like more cutting abilities, like like if, late game. Yeah. The, the longer the, the game, game goes, yeah. the longer her range gets. So if, yeah. Okay, if the game allows it to, you want to go shadow assassin into her and hope to get a snowball. Always, because, always, because, always. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, as always. Rost, like you cannot do anything. Okay, so if they have tanks, obviously you just go Rost. Like you're not gonna build. You're not gonna go your form depending on your jungle matchup alone. Oh, one, but one, if it's seven, a game. Yeah. But if it's a game that allows you to go Shadow Assassin, you just go for it against Kindred. Because if you manage to get a few kills early game here and there, maybe like outvalue her through farming, and then you get your blue form, um, you can actually just beat her. But I mean, her ultimate kind of cucks you, so you have to watch out for that. Usually, I like to save my ultimate as Shadow Assassin after when when she ults you. So then you just ult her, and then you come out of it after her ulti is done, and then you Expires. kill her. You, yeah, it expires, and then you just kill kill her either with the ulti or with just one auto attack. Usually, people can't really avoid your one auto attack out of ulti. Like usually, after ulti, you want to auto attack before Q because they can never really avoid that one auto attack. Uh, even with their dash, it will still go through. But um, as Shadow Assassin, if you get fed, if you get fed as Shadow Assassin. You just walk up to Kindred. Like, usually, you don't want to start with W, because if you start with W, she will dodge it instantly with a hop, and then you just lose the 1v1. You want to walk yeah, you try up to, to auto-attack Q. Yeah, yeah you, you auto-attack Q. She will usually hop after. Like, Kindred is just gonna, not, not going to sit you sit still in front of you after you took half of her HP and one auto-attack you. So she will hop, and then you W. Then you w. And then you see what she does. If she ults, then... You ult. You ult her, wait for it to expire. Yeah, yeah, and then you ult And then you her. jump out and burst her down. Yeah. The problem with Thrust is you do not have enough damage to yeah, burst exactly. her yeah. after you ult her. Yeah. And then she's just, like, after her ult expires, she's yeah. just gonna kite you out and then you're gonna die. Yeah. Unlike Shadow Assassin, he has the ability to actually kill her afterwards. Yeah, yeah. I think the Kinder matchup is definitely better than the Graves matchup, but I still don't think it's good by any means. Like, it's okay, a joke yeah. if you're fed as Shadow Assassin, but. The problem is that you have to get fed as Kindred as Kane, which yeah. is, like, awful. Yeah, yeah, and the thing is, Kindred can just decide to invade you and shit on you early game so that you don't get to that point where you beat her. So, like, yeah. it's... it's Yeah, it's just a, a really bad matchup overall. There are things you can do. There are situations in which it's definitely doable. And again, Shadow Assassin pretty much... 
prioritize over Ross into her if the game allows it. But it's not a very good matchup. And again, she's better than you early game. She's better than you mid game. She's better than you late game. And uh, the only time you're going to get it off is if you get fed as Shadow Assassin. And that can definitely happen. And if you're the better player, that can definitely happen. But matchup wise on paper equal skill level you're you you just don't win so does that do it for overall the i would say that's all matchups yeah um wait Can't let me of any that's other... definitely the ones that need to be talked about yeah. like the I mean, let me, if we missed anything like let me just go let me just go on the champion list like if we missed any matchup yeah but i mean i, I thought think... we did though yeah, I think those were, like, the most important ones. Like, I'm not gonna talk about, like, how to beat the one Clef jungle player on the server or some shit. Dude, don't talk about sea lamb. <laughs> don't, don't mention the sea lamb in my presence, please. <laughs> Dude, what happened to that guy? I don't see him ever. I don't, I don't... know. Thank God he's fucking gone there. <laughs> what did he do to you? <laughs> I, I just don't like that guy. On principle. <laughs> that dude literally plays fucking press the attack cled jungle and he never takes flash he always takes ignite and he just walks into my jungle and fucking kills me he'll like hit me with an e i'll flash over a wall and then he'll just e over the wall again and i die i'm like okay, wow dude sick yeah. very cool yeah well the thing about like is ignite pta cled jungle is that like, uh, I guess we can just talk about that, why not? Like, for two seconds, but basically, if he lands his Q, you're just dead. Like, he just ease you twice, like, there's nothing you can do. But yeah, you're never gonna see that player, so don't worry about it. Okay, so, as far as other jungle matchups go, Re Rek'Sai could be... Re we miss Rek'Sai. Oh, uh, yeah, we should probably talk about the Rek'Sai matchup. And, uh, hey. all that needs to really be said is, uh, you get shit on, uh, early game, you get Before dumpster. Four, Mm -hmm. Um, post form, it really depends, in my opinion, on what rune they have. Um, sort of, I, I guess, pr uh, like, contrary to what people would think, I don't think that Conquer Rek'Sai beats, uh, Rust. Okay, but yeah, Hail I Blades think, yep. I think Hail of Blades Rek'Sai can be shits on you. Yeah, because you get um, bursted before like, you, especially you can if actually it's kill you. New item. Yeah, because that's the thing, is that Hail of Blades Rek'Sai... Like, Rek'Sai, even with Conqueror, she's not gonna win the long trade into a red cane. That that never fucking happens. Yeah, but she can yeah, just kill. To, but she can just kill you while you're fucking knocked up if she has Hail of Blades and a little bit of a lead. So that's the problem. Yeah, you'll get knocked up. Three autos, bam, bam, bam. True damage, like you're max dead. true damage. E and all. You're you're done, dude. You're yeah, yeah. I could. That's, that's it. The yeah. one thing that can happen is like, uh, uh, this is in very specific matchups. If you uh, put distance between you and her after she ults, and as she's flying out of the ground, you can actually ult her to dodge the damage. I actually I ulted her feel. once before she even started the animation. I ulted yeah. her as, if, as she was casting it, and then when she went underground, I was actually still inside of her. Yeah, you're still inside her, and then she comes out and doesn't damage you. So, like, yeah. there is counterplay of the matchup, but... You just concede pretty it's much everything slim, early yeah, game. Time. Yeah. yeah, but you but you outscale her, so it's not as yeah. bad. And also, she's not as mobile as like the likes of Lee Sin, or like she doesn't have the chase potential that Olaf would have. So like, as long as you don't get knocked up by her, you should mostly be able to evade her. Like you have your Q, you have your E. Like most of the time, you can avoid Rexai, but you probably have to concede. Like, if you don't have prior in your lane and she invades you, you'll probably have to concede some stuff. Also, against Rek'Sai, uh, red specific, you can just time your W so that when she comes to knock you up, like, she just walks up to you and knocks you up, you can just W her so that both knockups are just at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And Rek'Sai gets much better of an advantage, especially if she has Hail of Blades, she gets a bigger advantage with the knockup duration than you than, than you do. So trading knockup durations is actually really good against Rek'Sai, and uh, especially if she has Hail of Blades, and, you just, and then you just kind of beat her. But yeah, overall, again, you're playing Kane. most of your matchups are going to be shit, but Rek'Sai isn't the worst. Like, it's, it's available, and you outscale her, and it's it's not that bad. Yeah, like you can you can easily run away from her. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. If she jumps on you, you can easily run away from her. Unlike yeah. and a you champion have, and like Leeson. Yeah, and yeah. You like you or have Rengar or something like yeah. that. Yeah, you have outplay potential against her. Actually, we have we have a lot more matchups uh, to go to, but uh, but yeah, but that that's basically Rek'Sai. Like it's just another one of those early game genres. But you are able to do more things because 
of, of your evasiveness. But uh, so I want to talk about the Cartus matchup. That's a oh, very no, that's a please. very that's a very polarized matchup. Ugh. That's a matchup that I love and hate at the same time. Like I hate him when he gets Sonya's period man. Yeah, well that's the thing, right? Is that I love that matchup, but I hate that matchup at the same time because if I get a slight lead and get Shadow Assassin, I can just remove You can him abuse from... him, yeah. Yeah, you can just destroy him and even like you can actually win. Actually, it's hard because the one v one preform as the as far as the one v one goes preform, you can't beat him if you dodge some of his cues. But it's really fifty fifty. Yeah. Like basically, yeah. you need to help. You need to My be problem is that I think that you do beat him preform, yeah, but the issue is like even if you kill him, if you had to like all in him and flash everything, he's he can, yeah, almost. He always going to just kill you too afterwards and yeah. and a kill on karthus is way way better, way better than a kill on kane yeah like that, yeah it's, it's it's kind of a skill matchup but it's the, the problem with karthus is that he scales harder than any jungler in the game clears faster than any jungler in the game True. has just as much objective like taking ability as any of the other meta junglers yeah like my issue with Karthus, Karthus really stems from the fact that Karthus was designed as a lane champion with very like inherent weaknesses that are very obvious and easy to exploit. And, and then if you put him in the jungle and you give him Hunter's removed. Talisman, yeah. all yeah. those weaknesses go away and yeah. you just have this like fucking monster, yeah, like, this absolute demon of a champion. Yeah, like his only Ugh. weaknesses is I guess getting invaded Mobility. early. But oh. again, it's a 50-50 trade against Cardus, and he has a very healthy clear if he's good. Now, shitty Cardus players are actually going to end their full clear with uh, with really low HP, but if they actually know how to kite their camps, which which is actually the case in high elo, but in lower elos, you could probably... Just don't ban Cardus in low elo. In low elo just only ban Master Yi. Yeah, Master yeah, Yi, yeah, yeah. potentially. Yeah, like Cardus is actually requires a baseline... Like, as dumb as it sounds, like, haha, press our memes, uh, Cardus requires a baseline of skill to be able to play him in the jungle. Otherwise, you you will be, like, low, like, very low HP on your clears, you will get abused and shit. Like, it requires a baseline of skill. So, in lower elos, I wouldn't worry about Cardus, really. Like, you should just shit on him with Shadow Assassin really easily. In higher elos, though, it's hard, because he will just rush Zonyas and fuck you up. Like, it's a bad matchup, but it's not ban worthy because there are things you can do. You can get fed at Shadow Assassin, you can, you can get to that point of removing it from the I game. Would say it's a team difference. I yeah, would say it's a team team yeah. difference against Karthus. Yeah. yeah, it's also like... I want to like say it's a team, team difference, okay, but if like... If team gives ultis to Karthus, that's also a thing. Yeah. Yeah. The, the problem is that Karthus is such a binary champion. He, he yeah. literally just wants to do the same thing every game with no yeah. variance. And like... Yeah. If he gets no to do that uninterrupted, which we are really bad at disrupting because we're yeah. such like we have yeah we such only a need we, we, we can only do it with Rasta yeah. yeah like yeah. if we just let him power farm the whole game he wins a hundred percent of the time yeah. and we don't have we're not Elise we're not Rexai we're not Lee Sin yeah. we don't have the tools to stop this. Doing okay. what he wants to do. You alone. can you can try to like outvalue him by ganking a lot of lanes. Like you're ganking, but even then, Cartus's ganks are better than yours, regardless. Like Cartus ganks are actually way better than people think because the threat of his Q make people just go like j j j j just wiggle instead of walking straight. To, because if they walk straight to the tower, they just die to like Q Q Q Q Q Q. So they have to wiggle. So then they actually get kind of CC'd by the fact that they can't walk straight. So like Cartus yeah. ganks are actually really really hard to avoid. So even when it comes to ganking, it's it's a uh, it's really hard, but yeah, like... I think you should always try to counter jungle. To counter gank, to counter gank uh, Cartus. Yeah, yeah, okay, if you're able to counter gank Cartus, you kill him really fast because he's really squishy yeah. early game. But, uh, yeah, as usually the playstyle that you want to go for against Cartus, again, if you AFK farm against Cartus, you don't win. You, you don't win. Even if you're the same CS level as Cartus, you, you you don't fucking win. It's fucking Cartus, right? So your strategy isn't power farming. Isn't like full clear, full clear, full clear, full clear. You're not, you're not gonna full clear spam into Cartus. You just you, you just fucking lose. So the strategy is just cam bot, just cam bot Shadow Assassin playstyle, pretty much. It's what I do in yeah. Cartus. Like it, it it allows you to, it increases your odds to having the tools to deal with Cartus, basically. Like just camp mid 
mid bot uh, get shadow assassin and then you you need game. to yeah. really cater to any champions that are going to be able to disrupt Karthus late game on your team if you're yeah. playing in him and like yeah that's some long range mid lane mages um, uh 80 carries that have a lot of like self-defense yeah. uh, kaisa can build zonias etc etc yeah. um but like otherwise like everybody just falls over late game to Karthus. yeah like, it's not an impossible matchup. There's a lot of things you can do. You just don't want to go to late game. That's basically... It's it. just really bad if you really the player want to abuse knows your mid game, doing. yeah. You really want to yeah. abuse your mid okay, game. Okay, level, level 6, though, I will say that. Your level 6 power spike as Kane is really good. And you actually do beat him 1v1 every single time level 6. Um, uh, level 6, uh, until... Until he gets first item after Runic Echoes, I think you do beat him level 6 with your ulti. Because it, yeah, allows you I would to dodge, so. it, it allows you to dodge one of his Qs, and then he doesn't know where you come out. And it, it just gives you a, a, a huge lead, uh, a huge lead in the 1v1. But, so you can look for to invade him if he's not already three levels above you. <laughs> like, you can try invading him at level 6. Yeah, but, I'll um, just, just like sum up the pol the polarity of the, the Karthus matchup real quick. If yeah. you power farm, you lose. If you gank a lot, you lose because he's power farming and he's also farming your jungle. So yeah. he's gonna come out like four levels up on you, like yeah. Oblivion Orb, Sorcerer Shoes, Runic Echoes, and he's just gonna do like 800 damage with his ult and then you die. <laughs> it, it, the only way you win is if you snowball through bot lane, get blue, and annihilate him in his in his jungle whenever he goes yeah. for a camp. Yeah. That's it. Pretty much. Yeah. Oh. It forces you to play in a way that, like, you otherwise really would not want to play as exactly. Kane. Exactly, because your your main strengths as Kane are greatly outvalued by Cartus. So you actually have to play differently because you cannot play to your main strengths. Because if you do that, you allow Cartus to play to those same main strengths that are way higher, which is like power farming and late game scaling, which is yeah, it's just really bad. But yeah. Overall, that's pretty much it for the Kartos matchup. Let's talk about the Shaco matchup. That's a funny one. I think it's easy. Uh, yeah, it's fucking easy. You, yeah, it's, it's, it's so easy, man, to be honest. <laughs> like, if you a... go Rust, you beat him. If you go Shadow, that's it, you beat him. Yeah, like, you beat him. The only course. problem I have with Shaco is AP Shaco, and that's like, you just, like, if he's a smart player, you can't kill him, yeah. but he is never any threat to you. Ever. Yeah, that's the yeah, thing. That Shaco is kind of like that treat that you get once in a while, right? Like, it's it's just such an easy matchup. Basically, you beat him 1v1 pretty much every stage of the year. At level 6, though, I'm not sure. At level 6, I don't think you can kill him. Uh, at, at level six, kill. base v base, you don't beat him, but yeah. once you get your form, you get form you get yeah, you get shit yeah, on that champ. Yeah, basically, level six to form, he wins. Form, you win, basically. But pre six, uh, pre six, the only way he beats you is if he gets a really good box. But then the trick is just to smite the box. You just smite the box yeah. as he places it, and oh. if he, and then he just has to Q away. But if he Q to get into you, he basically dies because it doesn't take flash. Like it's it's a it's a really free matchup. Like I know I'm friends with like a lot of Shaco one tricks, and there's this one that I run a lot in two solo queue. Like uh, yo, uh, Mike, have you ever played against uh, Revive? Yeah, yeah. Like uh, that's one of my Shaco one tricks friends, and I I've never lost into him. Like it's like every single time I play against them, it's the stupidest game ever, and I just win all the time. Like, like the only time I lose to Shaco one tricks is like it it's not. It and again, this is we'll say this for team. a lot of matchups. It not losing Shaco, it's your team yeah. like shoves up into a level three gank that we all know is coming. It's super obvious, and they die. Shaco gets a double kill. I'm like, well, yeah, sick. Yeah, you don't know, like Shaco, even though he's really weak into you, and it's pretty much a free matchup. If he gets ahead, his snowballing is kind of crazy. So you do want to actually like be tracking him, and Shaco usually you should. Be if you're familiar with the matchup, you should know what Shaco wants to do. It's a very specific playstyle, but like basically, you should know. You know what I would starts. risk against the Shaco? You know yeah. what I would risk against the Shaco actually? If he starts red, he's gonna solo it right with three boxes. Oh, you want to do a cane cheese? No, yeah, what yeah. what he'll do? This is what almost all Shakos do is um. They, get they will leash. start two boxes at buff, one box at big camp. They get a leash. So they if you're leash. red side, this is Krugs. If you're blue yeah. side, this is Gromp. Yeah. They'll get a small leash, 
kill red and then queue over and it, they they will clear faster than us yeah, because, i will say that no like i like mm. i know like uh shaco like yeah and i i know like every shaco wants to get a leash like leashless shaco is not a thing anymore it's not efficient it's like it's like a cane raptor start you only do it into you'd only do it if in certain scenarios like we explained like if you want to get prior mm -hmm. but shaco always will always get a leash. So you should know where he's starting, and based on that, you should kind of know his camp sequence. Okay, yeah, in that case, just camp. ignore the chase, yeah, because it wouldn't, it wouldn't be possible, yeah. yeah but yeah, at the time, you yeah. would be yeah, eating yeah, over the wall time, to yeah. actually try stealing the red buff, yeah, he'll yeah. be done, and then... Yeah. So, we'll, 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 get, we'll get to the cane cheese later, later on, though, because that's one of my personal favorite. but now we're still on to matchups. So, yeah, Shaco, free matchup, easy. We, we don't need to talk about that. What about... um? Uh, we don't need to talk about Ivern. That shit is... Yeah, no. We don't need to. Nobody plays that shit. That shame doesn't exist. Come on. I haven't seen yeah. Ivern in, like, my last... I've only played, two, like, last year... Games I've on. only played one game last year against Jamaican Banana, and that was it. He doesn't even... He, he's support bait now. He doesn't even play Ivern anymore. Yeah, he doesn't even play Ivern anymore. Nocturne Jungle is a dead champion. He has... He, he is at the 43% win rate in the jungle right now, so... Overall, it's not even worth really talking about. Anyway, it's not really that hard of a of of a matchup because he's looking to form and then he's looking to form and then apply pressure after six. But you get mo much more far value out of farming and then he just becomes useless like, again. Like it's just it's just yeah. a really easy matchup. And then just shit on him with both forms like really easily. You just want to ult him when he's fearing you so that you use the fear. You spend the fear duration inside him, so then you, you're just chilling. Yeah, like also it. try... The, the thing that you can do with um, Spell Show Champions, and this is sort of more of like a, just a general mechanics thing, but this is, applies now when we're talking about the Nocturne matchup as well, is as either form, you'll want to put your W down on the ground, and if they're smart, they're going to try and Spell Shield it, right? Because your W is like... Yeah. It's your 70% slow, it's very threatening to get hit by. And then as they Spell Shield, you smite their Spell Shield away. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's really good. And uh yeah, but that pretty much sums it up with the uh, uh, Nocturne matchup, Amumu, yeah. Uh, we're not gonna talk Amumu about is so free, like yeah, yeah Amumu the is free. Have... You beat him at every stage of the game, you clear his game. you do yeah. you do whatever the fuck you want. Like it's you can dodge this ultimate as well. Like, yeah. yeah. It's, uh it's, do we need to talk it's... about Udir? Like Udir is simple. Like he shits on you early game, then he becomes I think totally you just useless. Yeah, you can. I think like, you just he, avoid Udir. Yeah, he you ignore him. Man. Yeah, he doesn't even chase you. Like Olaf throws an axe at you, so then you're slowed. So then you're in combat, so you can't like yeah, e. Yeah. So you can't use a long e, and then he just runs you down, and then like it's really hard to like kind of get around him. Same, same for Lee Sin, but Udir can never really interact with you if you just. He has to away. flash on you. He has to flash. He, on he, you. he literally like has to flash on you to kill and you. Even even if he flashes on you, you have to be low HP. Otherwise, you queue over the wall. You e over the wall. You queue away. Then he over the wall. Like there's so many things you can do. Like oh, you're a garbage two champion. He's a rework. Like you you never lose to him. Um, is there any like more important matchup? that we missed? Uh, Trundle's pretty popular right now. Trundle um, is easy. I, like, just general Trundle stuff. Don't try and fight him. He's a really, really potent duelist. Uh, yeah, you're be careful ulting at super low HP, because his ult can technically kill you in ult, because it's yeah. a drain. Yeah. Uh, ignore him as blue. D dumpster him as red. You just take red smite into him, preferably. Yeah. Yeah, you just take red smite into him, and it's pretty much like it's not that hard of a match. He can't invade you, really. I mean, he can, but he can never kill you because if he pillars into you, you just go through the pillar the and think. then through the wall next to it. Like yeah. it's like because you're not in combat if he pillars you. He, you're only in combat if you take damage. So like you you just go through it even if you're slow. It doesn't matter. Like you 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 avoid him really easily. Like it's a yeah. It's pretty much an an, an easy matchup. Evelyn. Yeah. Evelyn is kind of interesting. Um, uh, I feel 50, it's 50, 50. In my you opinion, have to ult her before she ults you. I think it's 50 50. I think, but in my opinion, look. you get dumpstered as red form, but um, it's 50 50. That might be an it's unpopular opinion. As Frost, I think, as uh, Frost, you get one it, shot it, if she gets a if she gets a charm on you and she has a little bit of a you get one shot as Ross. So I agree. 
Like, w w what happens when you play Rast? You come up to her, you do all her. She gets you low, you always want to ult before she ults you. If she ults you first, you're not going to be able to engage on her again. She's either going to run away. And the problem from Evelyn, or you're just going to die. The problem with Evelyn is that, like, as Rast, and just the way that Evelyn, like, cuts through tanks, like, and bruisers by extension, if she gets the jump on you, you're dead. Uh, there really isn't anything we can do. If you have treads, you can actually survive if you, if you smite ult, but you need 50% tenacity. Yeah. The, yeah. Like, just the 30 from Legend Tenacity isn't going to cut it. As Shadow Assassin, it is 100% dependent on who gets the jump on who. Exactly. If you get the jump on her, you annihilate her, because if you ult, after she ults, you follow her and then just pop out and kill her. Yeah. Uh, and if she gets the jump on you and you get charmed, like, you're, dead. you're just you dead. You, 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 can, you can live, you know, it's... Yeah. Uh, as for, like, just general preform stuff, uh, you're... You beat her. She literally is not, like... We joke about how Kane isn't a champion until... Evelyn straight up is a minion until she gets level 6. That yeah. champion doesn't do anything yeah like you can actually innovate her it's one of the few matches that you can actually walk into her jungle and look to kill her literally like she cannot do anything to you like pre six like it's really 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 easy like i would say it's a 50 50 matchup in the grand scheme of things pre six try to abuse her because you have that edge over her and you can actually just make up for the loss of farm by farming like her camps even like it's it's really free. After 6, though, it becomes kind of a 50-50 gamble. If you go red, you're unfavored against her, but favored against her team since her team is what made you go red. So you want to play more around, like, team-focused. And if you go... And if you're... If it's a game where you can blue, then you can... You can kind of look for that. The Edge of Night is really important into... Into uh, Evelyn, obviously. Like, uh... I would agree. Yeah, Edge even, of Night is uh, even essential. Second, even, even second item, like uh, even just skipping you and getting a second item would be would be a must into Evelyn. Like it, it, it allows you to get a better edge on her, and it also allows you to pretty much be immune to like her uh, to like her charm cue, like basically her trying to trying to do her thing. So she she would only yeah really... her opener. That she wants yeah to yeah there. exactly. You, you get immune to her opening basically. But yeah, the Evelyn matchup is pretty easy. As far as late game goes, you are... Actually, I don't know. Is Shadow Assassin better late game than Evelyn? I don't think so. If no. she, uh, yeah, I don't think so. Definitely not. Yeah, I think Shadow... And, and that's only because... She's AP. That's only because Evelyn has threat on tanks. That, that, yeah, uh, which that's is something that Shadow Assassin can never do. Yeah, that's actually mm. a big one. And um, I think she also beats you in one of the Shadow Assassin late game. It, it well, it really depends on who gets the drop on who. But like the the reason why yeah, Evelyn is you. so much better late game is that her W like it, it just takes away so much of your magic resistance. Yeah, it's too. it's insane. Yeah, yeah. So generally, I think it's a fifty fifty matchup. But you don't really. I mean, anyway, when you're playing Shadow Assassin, you don't want to get too late anyway. So just play proper shadow assassin and you should be able to just win it mid game to be honest because if it's a game that allowed you to go shadow assassin you have you have other targets to one shot than evelyn and then again just just be better and win next day but um as for uh, wait when she charms you yeah wait when she charms you yeah yeah just e and yeah if, if you see charm go over your head just like go in a wall and yeah. just run yeah, exactly. Don't stay um, still in a wall, though, because she can still, like, Q. Yeah, she can still yeah, hit yeah. you with Q in wall. Yeah, but basically, abuse her pre-6, and then Rost, you kind of get fucked, and you want to play team-oriented, or, like, just play, just basically try to ignore her. And uh, if she charms you, then you want to ult. Shadow Assassin, you can get the edge on her if you want if you want to play th that game. Which also, also really important against Evelyn, uh, I'm glad that we didn't skip that. Use your E true walls to, to be able to spot her in viz because you can actually spot her in viz uh, by going through walls and it shows that little indicator it's really important against Evelyn. yeah 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 like uh, it's uh, we can actually spell. transition wait, 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 wait. what we could actually transition into mechanics from this because uh, um that's um, one of them actually yeah it, it, it's it's one thoughts. mechanic but yeah i think we went through pretty much every match like nunu i guess is 
I mean, Nunu is kind of a free Nunu is doable it's, nowadays. Do, it's, it's Nunu is doable nowadays, okay, yeah. It, it as Ross, complete, it's definitely doable. It used doable. to be complete ace, but now it's like a weaker Zack, pretty much. I feel like Nunu is just a weaker yeah. Zack yeah. that doesn't yeah. scale. Like, uh, you just hard shit on him 1v1 at every stage of the game on equal footing. And unless you're Shadow Assassin, but if you're Shadow Assassin, The you're only more... thing he does better at you, I feel, is just objective his objective control, control because it's good, yeah. yeah. Like, you clear Double faster, swim. I think, gank-wise, I mean, I guess his ganks are a little better, but even then, like, it, like if you counter gank Nunu, you're pretty much, like, he's gonna proc after a shot, then you counter gank him, you're pretty much sure to win that 2v2, unless he, they, they, like, burst down the target. Like, overall, it's a really free matchup that you beat at every stage of the game, especially if you go Ross. Like, uh, Nunu used to be really, 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 really AIDS, but nowadays, it's, it's a really easy matchup. Like, Mike, do you have anything to add to the Nunu matchup? Uh, just hope that... Y like, it it's the same thing with every tank jungler. Like, you dumpster him because you're a tank killer. Like, obviously, except for the Zac matchup, we which we talked about. Yeah. So you dumpster him because you're designed to shred tanks. But, like, he has more gank power than you do early yeah. game. So if, if he, like, has eight successful ganks by the time you get formed, you just lose to your tank. So yeah, but, that's but, how I feel about that. Yeah, but again, when when giving like that general advice, obviously there's gonna be scenarios where every single advice is useless because like eight ganks in a row yeah. you just lose. But in general, in the average, in general you beat the free. champion. Yeah, like, it's, you it's, hard it's, shit. Yeah, yeah, like it's yeah. just free. Like you have so many options. Like the map is open to you. They can invade you. That's a big thing. They can't prevent you from playing your game. Like early game jungles can actually prevent you from playing. They can't prevent you from playing. You can actually prevent them from playing. You can counter jungle them. You can even kill them one v one. They can't really contest crabs against you. Like uh, overall, every time, like I, I won't even go over like Sejuani or anything because it's pretty much the same shit for every every everything jungler in a nutshell. Yep. Uh, so e Echo, Echo, <sighs> my team always loses to him, man. I you hate beat him. That like, I hate like, you, you you beat him. You beat him early in duels, but it doesn't matter. Um, he's just better he, than you. He, you he is like him. the same thing as Evelyn, but he spikes so much yeah. harder. Yeah. It, it he will actually just fucking destroy your team. Yeah, like that yeah. champion like, is just completely. He's actually my perma button right now. I think yeah. that you one v once you beat him as red. But the thing is that but even, you can't kill him. Like even if you, you beat have him to 1v1, go spirit visage third yeah, item. But that's the thing is that you beat him one v one. Even if you're like ahead of shadow assassin, you could technically beat him one v one. But like, you don't kill him. Like he's just gonna run. Yeah, he away just runs him. away. He has his oldie. He has his passive that gives him a billion movement speed. Like the he has scenarios. His insane shield he, and, and he builds Zonius. Well. He builds Zonius. He builds Zonius. So like, and, Z and Zonius. Like, and like, he has all access those to everything. things combined makes it so that unless he's really trolling or like you get to like CC lock him or like your team or anything, he, he should never die to you really. Unless he walks into a bush and you're playing Shadow Assassin and then you just one shot him. Or yeah, like, you just bop. Yeah, like that matchup is really bad, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't really ban him because at the same time, like, uh, if if they have Echo Jungle, if they have an AP mid laner, like they could go into an AP comp, and if you go like Magic yeah, Resistance or like, yeah, if you go like uh, yeah, if you go yeah. like uh, Magic, because MR items are just like insanely valuable in Ross. If you go like that kind of build, Rust, yeah. you just straight up out value yeah i'll scale them hard team. yeah like yeah, i just yeah, yeah. really so echo overall is really annoying but he cannot prevent you from playing the game though like early game yeah. like he cannot uh, invade yeah, yeah, you yeah. like he cannot like be annoying overall you can't get you, you can still get like you can still play your game and you can still just you can still just beat a better player overall like do smarter ganks like do smart objectives etc like overall he allows you to play the game Unlike Olaf, which Olaf doesn't allow you to play the game, so like whatever you do is useless. So overall, it's it's okay, but it's still a bad matchup because the champion is just overtuned. Like there's nothing else to say really. Like I goes fucking retarded. Uh, then one more. I think we're pretty much done with meta matchups. One more that I do want to talk about is the J four matchup. Okay. I think a few like literally yesterday, I out jungled a J four so fucking hard. I don't know how it happened, but it happened somehow early game. It's, I it's like, like as Ross, you beat him always. As Ross, I mean, you beat him always. As Ross, like, you beat J4 always. I feel like J4 is the same philosophy with tanks, except that he outduels you early game. Yeah. yeah. The, the thing, yeah. the bad thing about J4 is that like preform, and and even if like 
let's say J4 misses his EQ combo on you, and you're like, you're both level 3, you're both level 4, he might still beat you, just yeah. auto-attacking you because of his no, attack speed too. steroid and his passive. Yeah, no, he, be, he, he beats like, you just because of that, yeah. Straight up. Yeah, there, there's, it, there's a non-zero possibility that he'll just kill you. You'll hit everything, you'll heal with E, and he'll just still kill you. So, yeah, just avoid early. Like, yeah. um, abuse him as Ross, abuse him as yeah, Ross. Yeah, as Ross, he's free. Because the thing is, uh, and this is with a lot of people right now, a lot of people are very, very much shifted away from the warrior, uh, like all in, just dumpster your backline J4 playstyle to a that, more like yeah, Cinder Hulk, Cleaver, Gargoyle, just, don't play it. Full damage just J4, that, yeah, like full, full damage J4 was harder to play against, but this, like, you, you barely see it anymore. So J4 is usually pretty much a free matchup just don't fight him early game you should be able to dodge his eq 100 percent of the time if you have q up there's no yep. way you get hit by that if you just if you just like it's easy to predict too you don't have to predict dodge you can reactive dodge to it really easily like uh it's mm -hmm. yeah like you, you don't get hit by that you run away like it's you don't you don't lie to him you outscale him the only way for j4 to win is the spam gank literally just annihilate yeah. like try to cheese your team as much as possible but if you track him and again and that's why you should just strike teammate him while he's doing so on the opposite side of the map yeah and just... yeah and that's the thing is that uh that usually doesn't happen right like usually i mean sure some games like the image will get eight ganks in a row and you'll just lose but that doesn't happen all the time and also your team is just gonna ward like overall it's overall you get the edge on the matchup it's not very hard there's one guy in K-Mains asking you, what, asking you, Mike, what you think about the Fiddlesticks matchup. Oh. Um. I think it's... If you W his heal, I think it's me. I th it, it's, I don't know. That one could go either way, because like, Fiddlesticks is a champion that you will destroy and in invades, but you'll never kill him because he'll just, he'll just fear you and then walk away. Yeah. Yeah. He... Doesn't interact with you at all, yeah. and just gank slains with all. I, 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 it could go either way. Like, yeah. he has much more of a team fight. Pr it's, it's really, it's. I hate to sum up a matchup as like it's not you versus Fiddlesticks, it's Fiddlesticks versus your team. But like, it mm -hmm. really more than almost any other champion, it really is just your team versus Fiddlesticks. Yeah, ba basically into Fiddlesticks. Also, don't ever ult him if he's already draining. It's not going to do anything. Just gonna yeah, you're, you. just, you're just going to yeah. die inside him. Like, it's point Unless you're Ross, you want to regen, then walk away. But yeah, overall, it's it's troll. Um, against Fiddlesticks, I will say, though, if you go blue and you build the and you build Edge of Night, then you just oh, walk you into his jungle. Oh, you can annihilate him. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you just walk into his jungle and kill him 50 million times, and you just literally dumpster like overall it's an easy matchup like i don't i don't see much of a problem with fiddlesticks you sometimes like you, you can't really fight him early game because again he just drains he, but even if i i guess you can beat him if he's low and tries to drain you but you still kind of go through it but even then he just fears you and walks away like overall you can really kill him but that, that's like literally the, the summation of the matchup is like yeah. you get feared and then he walks away yeah so like um, okay and then the the and like if you go shadow assassin then edge of night and kill him and that's basically it i guess so i think we're done with matchups i mean do we need to talk about Shivan? that's not really super easy i don't know super easy it's like if she's ap she's just gonna farm and try to outscale yeah. you like it's the same as the karthus matchup really like yeah, unironically it is the same as the Karthus matchup, but you have to war dragons really early because she'll sneak them. Yeah, that's but it. it's the yeah. same as the Karthus matchup, but it's way easier, I feel like. It's just a shittier Karthus. Yeah, as, as Ross, I think you beat Shivana at every point of the game, I think. Like, yeah. Especially after you get that stance. Okay, so very early game, she beats you because overall her kit is better than yours at dueling. But once yeah, you yeah, get, yeah, yeah, but sure. once you just get your war hammer you and she's going AP, you already just win the 1v1 straight up. Yeah, yeah. 
Like, as long as you just get that little AD spike and she's going AP, because, like, nobody... I was so triggered, anymore. like, a few days ago when someone in the gameplay discussion channel mentioned her as, like, the strongest counter to gain. I was what? so triggered, man. There's... What? Graves, man. <laughs> Graves. Um, Be champions that fight oh! you. Champions that abuse you way harder early game that, yeah. that you can't run away from. And that guy mentions Shivana. I don't know, man. Like, uh, I, I can't, I, dude. I, I, see, I see Shivana in enemy team. I see pretty much a free win. Yeah, like it's it's really easy. Wukong jungle, what do you guys think? Wukong's pretty annoying right now. I mean, I, Wukong, like, I think is the champion that's just broken. Just, that's it. Yeah, right now he's just broken. You. I don't think it's the jungle I, I, matchup. I think it's the champion. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, like like it's just the champion. Like he. It's like Echo, actually. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I would, I, I would agree with that. Yeah, it's like, ju it's just like Echo. You don't you, you want your team to ban Wukong? You, you As Ross, you, you, you can like technically it. beat him, but like it doesn't matter because like he's way too useful in team fights and everything. He heals a lot, also with Conqueror. No, he gets even, to build Death Dance. I'm pretty as, sure. Even as Rust, like he stacks so much armor with his passive, you will yeah, literally that, yeah, not it, even it, kill it him. Screws you, yeah, it screws you over. Because like as Rust, you shred through hp and you can shred through not, some not armor, armor yeah and you can shred through some armor with black cleaver, with cleaver but yeah. but huge armor stackers like wukong like graves like uh but i mean ramus is an easy fucking matchup i don't even need to talk about that one but um but but but, but even ramus is pretty hard to kill when he has w up if he when he doesn't have a w up it's free but like wukong, i think mentioning lord onyx okay. right now is actually a good time Lord Dominic, Lord Dominic's I build it on I build it on blue against like Zania's builders, but I can also build it on blue against like Bruisers if I'm like really ahead. Like it's pretty much a cheese yeah. item on blue. On red, I barely build it though. I very it seldom. Stramus. It 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 can be super fucking good. Yeah. On on red, but it, it has to be the perfect situation. Yeah. 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 Like he, yeah, you basically have to be playing like into. I mean, if you if you if you if you're like a full AD comp, I think you have to get Lord Dominic's. Cause well, yeah. There's like armor, there's yeah, no. Yeah. There's no. Yeah. There's no conversation. Yeah, there's no negotiating that. Like you have to yeah. if you want to damage. But yeah. like otherwise, it's like. Eh. Uh, sometimes, maybe, sometimes yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. Also, yeah. Uh, otherwise you just become a, a knock-up bot, basically. <laughs> like, it's, it's just dumb. Mm -hmm. But yeah, overall, Lord Dominic's is kind of self-explanatory. You build it into insane amounts of armor, and, like, that's usually rare. Like, the amount of armor required for you to build that I'm on Rost is massive, you know? But if, if that scenario occurs, then you're god, basically. That's basically that item, since we want to go back to items a little bit. But, um, yeah, on matchups, I think we should be good. Yeah, that's pretty much different yeah. matchups. Let's move on to, um, like, just... I guess if you guys want to talk about mechanics, there really isn't much for the champion, but there's a few things, definitely. I think definitely mentioned the thing from earlier, which is the dot that you can spot out champions with. Exactly. Like, if, if you don't have vision into the into whatever you're going if you eat through a wall and there's like a dot that appears like somewhere around the wall yeah that, it's what you see yeah. playing yeah. against kane that little dot that indicates that he's coming out of the wall that only appears if there are champions nearby. nearby yeah exactly yep. that's a mechanic and obviously um against the all champion yeah, and you can flash you can flash into walls with e and shit you can do yeah. everything inside of wall yeah like if, if you, you e, if you, you press everything. if you press e and flash at the same time um, uh, you, but at the same time, like I usually just do it at the same time. You usually just flash into a wall, and that can get you out of a lot of situations. I yeah. guess uh, that's a pretty good one to know. Also, I mean, Q tap into wall is pretty simple, right? Like, yeah, Q, yeah, Q, Q, Q extend e. is is pretty strong as well. Yeah, I actually had a very good like opportunity to abuse it a few days ago. I, I was ganking bot lane from blue side. I was going down the wall beneath Dragon Pit. And my Q was like my E was just about to expire, and I would land that like I would land in the tribush on that side, but I managed okay. to like Q extend and that like still land in the lane, and I was able to like get a double kill. Oh yeah, Q extend. If that yeah. makes any sense. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but also with Q extend, you want to be careful because you want to Q extend into a wall, but you want you want the first part of the dash to already get you into the wall because if you if it doesn't. 
like when you queue, when you queue can when you can queue and uh, you do and the second queue animation goes through you you stand still for a split second and that yeah, can yeah. actually yeah you will just and, face and, plant and, and and if you stand still in front of the wall before reaching it then you just literally like uh, you, you won't you reach don't, it yeah. you don't make it through like uh, in in scenarios in which you want to queue in, into the wall but yeah basically just be just be be sure that the first part into, of the queue gets you into the wall now. A more important mechanic, I guess, is like, I guess, auto attack, Q cancel. You can like auto attack and Q at the same time and the and the damage will register like, uh, like basically, if you know that you've done this right, when the damage number of your auto attack and of your Q combine, and that's like a really yeah. efficient move, basically. It, it'll, it'll look like you had a really big part of your first Q. Exactly. So uh, if, if. If you know a little more, like your damage on Kane, you'll you'll be able to know when it's the case. Yeah, the the specific frame data differs from skin to skin. Since I mostly use Odyssey, it's like right about when Kane is about to hit the halfway point of swinging the scythe. Yeah, you can cancel into that. Yeah. Oh, there there is actually. I guess I, I do want to talk about this. Uh, it's sort of a leftover from um the W bug. If you guys remember the global W bug. Yeah. Um. You can actually, it, it has almost no practical application. You can actually control the dash speed and distance of Kane Q in a similar way. Since if you click to move on a spot, unlock your camera, and then slightly shift the mouse to where you want to Q to, and then Q, if it's like right in front of you, you will have a, a short instant Q. I did not know that actually. Yeah, I was. Uh, <laughs> I was fucking around with it a couple days ago in practice tool. Uh, mm. I almost there. I've never used it. I can't ever see an instance in which I would want to use it. Uh, it's it, it's basically replicating wall cancel, yeah, but without a wall. Yeah. But like, if you're not wall canceling, then you typically just want the full movement of your queue anyway. So it's like it's sort yeah. of a non-factor, but I just wanted to is cool little fun fun trivia fact. Yeah. So. Mm. Yeah, interesting. I but yeah, during your clears, try to wall cancel as as much as possible because okay. it saves time and yeah, you get you still get the same damage yeah. output. I mean, as far as combos go, like uh, obviously try to weave in auto attacks before yeah, abilities. Yeah, always. like no, yeah, like obviously you wanna. Okay, so when it comes to ganking, and that's actually really important. It's basic, but it's really important. Save your W. Never, never fucking open with W. That's yeah. fucking cool. Yeah, Six, you wanna yeah, yeah, go yeah, through yeah. the go through the wall. Auto attack them. Auto attack. Get an them, auto attack range. And then, yeah. and then as they are walking away, you wanna queue so that your queuing towers their escape route while hitting both parts of it. Like, Kane mm -hmm. isn't the Kane isn't the best ganker, so you wanna be really actually efficient with your ganks to make them work and then at the end you want the w to like make them flash or or even if you're like next to them and you w they flash and they still get hit by it or, or some shit like that like you want to save your w until the the crucial moment like there's no way to open yeah. the w so that's basically all the mechanics as far as combos go i mean shadow assassin base combo is just w auto q if you can't hit your first W, or if or if you're facing a Jin and there's like no way they're gonna stand still and eat your W, then you wanna... And that's, attack range, right? Yeah, you just wanna walk up to yeah. them, like, I mean, run up to them, and uh, proc Dust Blade Auto Attack. You usually do this with Blue Smite. Actually, the way I do it is I walk to them, I Blue Smite them, then I Auto Attack them, then I WQ them in succession and then if they if they don't have flash they just die and if they have flash i hold them and i just repeat combo and they die basically that's pretty much the shadow assassin's combo although for team fighting flash wq into like that's that, that that's my three three enemies favorite. oh god or, yeah. or two enemies that that's is so good my personal Feels favorite so fucking that good is my life. personal favorite it can just win you games on the spot like you are i mean doing all... this both forms is effective but on shadow assassin it just feels like, so yeah you just obliterate so, like three yeah. squishies it's so fun yeah. Yeah. yeah like that's one of your strengths and it's actually really important to look for those opportunities because of course if you don't have flash it's really hard to just position and then just one shot three people in in lower elos you can in higher elos nobody's gonna allow you to do that but if you have yeah, flash you get study, yeah. but if you have flash you get access to that for free and if you fed you're fed and you and you telegraph it perfectly you just like one shot everyone and you want to do this in crucial fights like before a baron or like just end game fights and shit 
like it's really powerful and after all you want to be using your aoe assassin tools right like you like one of the yeah, you're yeah. one of the few assassins that get like consistent aoe burst damage because mm. like i mean if like zq isn't really considered like, i think talent like i think only talent matches that kind of yeah, not even know. really anymore though I mean, like, not even like how because his his ult like doesn't yeah. massacre like multiple people anymore. Like that was the one thing that made Old Town like really insane was yeah. you could just straight up annihilate a whole team with your yeah. yeah, like the thing you can do with Talon is maybe like get two passive procs and then I guess you kill two people. We need to be really fed to do that. But yeah, yeah. basically flash WQ into a team and then like instantly you can either instantly ult a target that you've hit with it but it isn't dead, or if you've just killed everyone, then you just blue smite, uh, blue smite or any other target. You want to keep blue smite up for fights, actually. It's really important. But also be careful of that noob trap where you use blue smite for fights, but then you don't have it for Baron, right? Like, be, car be careful. Yeah, I, yeah, I, do, yeah. That I do that a lot. I do that all the fucking time. Like, I... And I may have lost games because I did not have smite because yep. I knew that I shot it. I'm platinum. Yep. I definitely lost them because of it. Like, I am. I am guilty of that. Yeah. Like, be careful about that. But if there's not like a, a huge objective threat or like whatever, like always have blue smite up for a uh, fight. Because anyway, you don't really need smite to clear camps as Kane after you have your. Form. Yeah, you should you, like. You, you should, should definitely consider yeah. blue smite as part of your rotation as opposed to like. Yeah. An objective secure unless exactly. you're in like you like have it, to get an objective like it allows you mm -hmm. to get a, to get a free ultimate like that is literally like there's a reason why kane ultimate has the restriction of uh you need to hit them before you ult them because otherwise that would be like uh, i mean that would be really powerful right but that bl having blue smite up gets rid of that restriction and it opens you up to so many like opportunities and like so many ways to play fights and win them. Like just just ju just have blue smite up. Like it's it's really good. Obviously, in the scenarios where you have to go red smite because you're playing red, but again, that blue smite thing is more valuable for for shadow assassin than for Ross. It can be valuable for Ross too. But in the scenarios where you take red smite on Ross, it's usually a it's it usually won't matter that much because you'll be facing more like duelist slash tank your threats. But yeah, blue smite is really important. So, as any other like champion specific mechanics or combos? Uh, yeah, if yeah, Ryan, if you're listening, uh, please, God, please, please let me W flash, please, dude, come on. Yeah, I feel like. Why can Mordekaiser do it? Yeah, I don't know. Pit. Oh, 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 right. Let's mention the Mordekaiser ultimate thingy that happens. Did if you, oh, yeah. Mordekaiser, that... Yeah, if you, if you ult Mordekaiser, like, if you're ulted by Mordekaiser, and if you ult by the time his ult is almost over, and you don't jump out, your ult is gonna be useless. It's, yeah, it's you, just gonna pop, you get popped out, and you don't, do, like, deal damage. Deal you don't deal damage, you don't, you don't, yeah, you don't deal damage, you don't it heal, nothing, cooldown. nothing happens. And it goes on cooldown, yeah. It's yeah. Really That's awful. awful. So, like, do you guys again, also sometimes get that Kane bug? Where you apparently used your ultimate, but it's still displayed as a non-cooldown. Yep, yep, you don't have yep, a cooldown on it. Yep. That, exactly. God, that, that's that so happens, fucking annoying. That happens when I ult, but my ally kills the target as soon as I ult. Yeah, same, same. So, it's I, so, so, so for one second, I think that, wait, did Riot actually make it so that when I ult as Kane, but the ult gets insta-canceled, do I actually get it back? No, it's just a visual bug. Company still sucks. Yeah, just, just, Jesus, just like, advice, always, if you ult and your target, your target gets killed, always check the cooldown of your ultimate. Like, ping, and if ping it, your cooldown, if it, basically. Yeah, ping your cooldown, ping for your visual, cooldown. In general, in League, for visual cooldown bugs, because it's not the only one, just ping, just ping the spell, and it will tell you the actual cooldown. Also, same for, like, ultimate displays of your teammates. Sometimes that shit is bugged as well, with your cult too. With your cult especially, and, like, other stuff. You I get baited by that so often when I play with your players, dude. I'm yeah. like, your ult is up, why didn't you use it there? It could've won us the gank, it was like, it's I mean, down. It's I'm okay. like, you, you probably. 
you probably played two games a season with York players anyway, so it, it, it's, fine. It, it's fine, you know. It's not that big of a deal. I, I, I actually play games with Zenith sometimes, you know, the cancer Discord user who, play, who one tricks Yorick. Yeah. Yeah, it happens pretty often to me. Wait, he's a Yorick one trick? Oh, yeah. my God. what little respect I had for him is gone. <laughs> he picked I like mean, diamond I one used, last dude, season or something. Dude, before Kane, I actually used to main Yorick. <laughs> <laughs> I, bro, I, dude, I don't know if we can be friends with that. Oh my god, that's worse than being a fizz one trick, dude. What the fuck? I mean, I hate his fizz one tricks. I used to be a fizz one trick. To be that's but... yeah, I hate fizz one tricks too, dude. Don't, don't worry. Oh <laughs> yeah, I love, dude, I love having me having them on my team though. They always do well. Yeah, they just snowball so hard. Anyway, yeah. digressing. Um. I guess we'll just move on to the last section now, which is just like general team fighting tips. Yeah, general team Shadow fighting. Shadow Assassin, you always flank. Shadow mm, Assassin, yeah. you always flank. There's like, I don't think you ever want to frontline as Shadow Assassin. It's, it's no. Really uh, typically, you'll want to let your team engage for you, and you only want to engage if they, you know that you can just instantly just fucking bot clap somebody immediately. Yeah. So basically, as Shadow Assassin, also, if you're in that mid-game phase, try to pick off side laners because the, the ADC is always going to try to catch side lane farm, and you can fucking, like, just travel the map in one second and just go one-shot them. Like, really punish every single positioning mistake. One, because you can, and two, because you have to, because you want to close the game as fast as possible. So yeah, just be, just be very aware of side laners. Especially if you're really fed, you could even go pick off like Irelia's trying to split push. Like you actually beat Irelia if you're really fed as Shadow Assassin. But you have to be like really fed, obviously. Like just in general, you're really good at just cleaning. Also, clearing side side waves, you can you're really good at. Like people underdo that, but you can actually just do that really fast. Like cl clearing the side waves is just like a side wave building up. Like you want to build up a, a split push or some shit. Like you can clear side waves as yeah, well. Yeah, definitely. But as far as team fighting goes yeah it just pretty much just you just go for the back line you can engage if you just flash wqn or you don't even need to flash really like if you just can't engage and you ult but that requires a lot of team play in the sense that you need to ping your team like a lot and then you need to trust them because like usually you will win most fights actually i do this as rust as well but i'll i'll go to the rust part later so basically i should like if you get like one or two kills and then you ult and then your team engages on them as your ult, as your inside ult, you should just win the fight. Like you just gain so much value out of it. Like it's disgusting. And that's also what I do as Ross. Now this has gotten me killed a few times and uh, I, I try to not do it as brain deadly as I used to do it. But just like literally just picking fights and just forcing fights non-stop as Ross if you're fed. And baiting the enemy team into wasting their shit on you, so that then you ult and then your team engages, is just so valuable. Like, I like to, for to force fights on Rust a lot. Obviously, you know, be careful of chain CC, you don't want to do this into, like, heavy chain CC. But if you can, like, you should. Like, you can sustain true fights a lot, and you can definitely force fights with your ultimate like that. Like, it can lead to really good scenarios, but... That's a little more advanced. Like, you need to know perfectly, like, your damage output, like, your survivability, etc. But it's definitely something you can... Like, you're really good at forcing. Yeah. You're really good at flanking. Definitely. Like, you can even flank as Rost, depending on... Of course, most ranged threats are just going to kite you. But, like, you have the possibility of just going through that wall. And, like, having the best positioning. That's the thing. Is that you can have any kind of positioning you want in a team fight as as Kane. As long as, as, long as you have a wall, pretty much. You can just come whenever you want wherever you want so that's also pretty good strength especially as shadow assassin but yeah overall team fighting is one of kane's strengths definitely and uh you should look for those five man knockoffs obviously as ross what i like to do is the ult and then as i'm ulting i'm already thinking of how to line up my knockoff like that's a huge one like, out of yeah, ult, I want to knock up right away. Because what will happen usually is that when you ult out, the enemy will be obsessed with with just, like, uh, knowing when you come out of ulti. Like, they, they will literally just watch out for that. Like, you can actually just literally win fights just by the pressure that you draw out of ulting. Because the enemy, you'll actually just confuse them, and they'll just be running around like headless chickens. Like, it's, it's, it's really You famous. know what I love? You know what I love? Yeah, okay. When you ult someone, when they like flash away into their own team, <laughs> then you exit and then you W all of them. 
<laughs> yeah, you just got like a five man knockup, and they yeah, all yeah. Yeah, it's like, great. Yeah, like <laughs> it, it's so fucking dumb. But yeah, but yeah, like the only reason why you, the only reason why Rust is so much better than Shadow Assassin when you're behind is because you got the potential to flash double multiple targets. Yeah, yeah, you can just become a them up. bot basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like uh, it's that's basically also I guess you get some more survivability out of your ulti. But okay, so as far as Shadow Assassin. No, actually, it was the opposite. I was going to, I was going to show us after Rost. But yeah, overall team fighting is really, really potent on Kane. And uh, yeah, I think that does that kind of sum up champion specific mechanics. And like maybe we should talk about inter some interactions with other champions. Like that do any kind of come to mind? Like Mordecai's ulti, like uh, anything else? Um, um, we talked about the Rek'Sai one. I, th I feel like that's an important one just because it's, uh, yeah, yeah, the Rex, like the... he's meta jungler, but that's like kind of, I, I don't know. I can't really think of anything else. Uh, I'm trying to think right uh, now. Oh, something like, uh, Elise, Vlad, and Fizz. If you ult them and oh, yeah, they you, use their, yeah, yeah, yeah. you kill you can still kill ult them you kill and, and they use their untarget ability, i.e. Elise, Repel, Vlad, Pool, Fizz, uh, like, Playful Trickster. Okay. I uh, love doing it against Vlad. You can still yeah. kill them and then, yeah. in and then their untargeted ability. The best part is when they type question mark in all chat after you kill them in untargeted <laughs> ability. Like fucking yeah. idiots. Like imagine not knowing that. <laughs> <laughs> like holy fuck. It's, yeah, it's definitely super potent against like Vlad players because Vl Vlad yeah. players will like very commonly they will channel E and then pull and doing that takes like 20% of your current HP. Yeah. So if you just ult them and like they're pooling and they like just lost 20% of their HP, yeah. you just kill them. Yeah. Although yep, against yep. like stasis effects like Bard Ulti and Zonius, you do not you do not deal the damage. Like you don't kill You anyone. have to wait. You, you could but, wait it out. You could wait it out potentially. Can, yeah, you can wait it out. The problem is that it lasts it it kinda lasts really long. Like you have you have like a 0.5 second, pretty much. Kane ulti is 2.5 seconds and Zonius is two seconds. So you have a 0.5 yes. second range on it. So you have to kinda be like yeah, you have to pretty much predict it. But um, if they like, if they Zanya's midway through your ultimate, you're not gonna get the damage off. Yeah, but you Never. can get the healing off. The the thing about yeah, you can get the healing off. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. you don't get a full healing off though. I will say that because Rost ulti okay. gives you a baseline of healing when you like. W w it's a healing no two parts. It has yeah. a base heal on it, and then it also heals based on the, damage, the damage it does for yeah, passive. like your passive exactly, and like death dance and shit. So you only get one part of the healings, but you still get some healing. So like, if some people didn't know that like you still get a healing you still do get it but you get kind of half of it into azania's so that's basically how that interaction works poppy uh poppy cancels your q and that's fucking hate i fucking hate that champion yeah <laughs> that but, champion but she doesn't she doesn't cancel your ulti she doesn't cancel your ulti so oh uh, another uh really i guess if we're talking just like other specific, champion specific things let's talk about cassiopeia Oh my god, you can't ulti, you can't ulti, okay, so Poppy W, you can ulti out of it, but you cannot ulti out of Cassio W, and that is so yeah, so, so Cassio P and W, Miasma, prevents you from using three of your abilities. You, you cannot Q, you cannot E, and you cannot ult. You don't have a kit. Like, you're not a champion. If so be care, very yeah. careful of that. This also goes for Singed grounding effect as well, but those are the only two grounding effects in the game. Yeah. Yeah, but Caster Dobby is like even worse. Like it's, it's it's terrible. I hate that champion. Yeah, like mm -hmm. Cassio would be like an off jungle ban that I would really consider, honestly. Yeah. If it I is... was if I don't if I'm like not banning a jungler, I am one hundred percent guaranteed I'm banning Cassio P in that yeah. game. Like, uh, if we're talking more like general Kane champion interactions, like Cassio is pain in the ass. Like, Jesus fuck. But, um, yeah, like, uh, overall, Fiora, do not ult oh, Fiora. Oh, no, no, while she no, is no, <laughs> no, I hate Fiora. I fucking hate her, man. Oh you d you never win against Fiora. You never win against Fiora. As, as Ross at yeah, I mean, you don't win regardless of whatever. She's like pseudo tanky. She has more burst than us. It's... Yeah. She builds anti heal. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's not like, fun. Yeah, like, the only way you win is like she doesn't have parry. But 
Yeah, no, it's just yeah. even if she does like it, it's there's just really also just con just consider if if she parries your ultimate, it it, it doesn't just go on a three yeah. second cooldown. It just yeah, completely. Yeah, you just don't get your roll. Yeah, you yeah. basically just stand. It's pretty there. sick. Yeah, you basically yeah, it, it's fucking <laughs> epic when that happens. That's you stand so... there, you stand there like your champion had a fucking stroke and your ultimate goes on cooldown. Yeah, <laughs> like it's, it's it's fucking beautiful. Man. I would ban Fiora over Cassiopeia. Not gonna lie. Nah, I think I yes. like it's. You could definitely make an argument for it, but like, d it, there's nothing that triggers to me as much as like, Man, I get ulted and then she throws down W, and then I just see the fucking twin fangs flying out, and I'm just yeah. like, <laughs> and I'm like struggling, like moving at like 200 movement speed to get off this fucking poison. I'm finally off, and then I die. <laughs> yeah, it's just. It's That's awful. Beautiful. I hate it. At, at least we get to bully Vladimir players, though. At least we get to bully those those guys. That's true. Like... We we do dumpster Vlad players. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like really hard. I love to see people like complaining about Vladimir, and then you can just sloth and rust or shadow assassin even like. Yeah. If you if you do yeah. shadow assassin, you you have to like he can't hit level sixteen because then you just lose. Yeah, 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 yeah. Shadow, yeah shadow assassin yeah, thinks shadow assassin thinks, but. Yeah, how it happens yeah, is that always. if Vlad is 16 and you're playing Shadow Assassin, what will happen is that you will die inside your ulti to his ulti. That's essentially it. That gets mm. really annoying. But, uh, yeah. Um, Champion-specific mechanics, like any other interactions that are worth mentioning that are, like, uh, really, really annoying or whatever? Uh, honestly, not that I can think of. Off I mean, the, off I, the okay, I have the champion I'm list. I'm trying to think. Okay, I just have the champion list in front of me. So we did the jungle champs. So I guess I'll just keep going. Uh, Silas Kane ulti interaction. There's not much to say about that. It's pretty obvious what happens. Oh yeah, you can kill Yumi if you alter, just like Vladimir yeah, yeah, and yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can kill Yumi if you alter before she binds. Yep, that's yeah. true. Um. Obviously, yeah, I think again, that's it. W, obviously, again, against that champion, like Zed or whatever, just W backwards on data. That's pretty common. Oh, also, dude, I fucking love playing against LeBlanc when I play Shadow Assassin. You dumpster her so hard if you play well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because you can cover, like, the whole W thing, like, where she is yeah. and where she lands, and then you just, like, one-shot her. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, it's so fun. But it's kind of a trickier one because she can definitely fuck you over, but, like, it's... It's a fun skill matchup when you pull it off. Um, yeah, as far as champ interactions, I think we're good to go. I think... Uh, we already talked about team fighting a little as well. Yeah, we talked about team we fighting. Could, we could transition into, actually, the questions from the server. Yeah, to be we honest, could just this end. Point. Yeah, we could just end with the... Alright, yeah, we'll questions. wrap it up then. With yeah, the not, server so let's, let's open that, I guess. Alright, so... First guy, opinions on this matchup sheet, ignoring the outdated stuff like old Phil matchup, etc. Do we open the sheet and just go over one, over each champion? Uh, or just ignore the, the one question completely. Is that, is that, is the, that one the one that, that Skull uh, Stab did? Yeah, yeah, it's from Skull Stab. Yeah, yep. Super outdated. I would not it's follow super, it. I, I personally, outdated. I personally would like to write a more updated one, but I, it, it would be finding the time right now. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I think I think it's also necessary because we like pretty much addressed all jungle matchups early. Yeah, but it, so, it, yeah. it would be it would be yeah. nice to have an updated sheet that anybody can consult, and we could do that in the future. But like, yeah, no. Basically, all you need to know is that that sheet is giga outdated. It's it yeah. even talks about like old runes. Like I think that was made when yeah, like old conquer, old dark harvest. It was old dark harvest. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, just ignore that sheet, and we should probably remove it from pins as well. We'll do that later though. Yeah. Also, cane resources. Yeah. Yeah. So, so same question: Is it is it objectively worse to pass from red to raptors to the two small wolves to blue buff, and then gank yes. one of the lanes before three minutes, and then go back down to skull, and then clean red side then blue and skull? Uh, yeah, yeah that doesn't make any baby. sense. Hey, that's awful. Don't do that. Yeah, that, like that what, shit is a meme. Like what? Like why? Why would you even like? Like, clear the two small wolves. There's not any thought process. It doesn't give you a good level spike. It doesn't do anything for you. Like, it it, it just doesn't make any sense. Like, uh, you basically, full clear. You just get your level 4 into the crab. Like, that's what you want to do most games. Sometimes you can transition gank mid. 
or like gank bot if you, you got flashes level one but that's about it like there's very little variation when it comes to first clear all right what's Let's the turn base so okay. like so like yeah yeah so like mike now mike now yeah yeah all right mind. where are we at let's see what is, what is the, the ideal, ideal path? pathing uh we answered that yeah we just best just tip to climb out of low elo with kane Play around winning lanes. I know that you can't really trust your teammates in low elo, but if you're playing around winning matchups, you're just like, you can just take the kills from your ganks. Because as Kane, you can't really, like, preform, you almost can't make anything happen yourself. You yeah, need you your team. Play. So if you play around lanes that are just inherently easier to gank, you're go you are going to get ahead as well as your teammates. Yeah. Like, who knows? Maybe your teammates have, like, you know. More than five brain cells to rub together. Also, ban, ban, ban low elo champions too. Yeah, also so, ban Master Yi. Yeah, I'll respond. Yeah. yeah, I'll respond to that as well. Overall, you want to be, especially climbing out of low elo, you want to be really selfish. Like I would say, take every resource. Take yeah, take every, every kill, kill. Yeah, take like and just basically be okay because you're the constant in all of your games and in low elo with Kane. Like Kane is really good in low elo. Like you can just pretty much you can hyper carry stuff. hard. Like you can just hyper carry every single. Like, if you get the resources, it's a play with. Yeah, like just play with confidence basically. I would say like really take all resources. Like your champion uses them very well and uh, yeah, like basically play play for one v nine. Don't play around your team. I mean, you can play around your team. Like, for example, again, you well, you want to gank your winning lanes. You want to gank like lanes that are good to set up for. But overall, the goal should be to get yourself fed, and you want to fit. Like as I said at the beginning, you want to choose form and build based on the enemy comp. You don't, you don't want to, you don't give a shit about fitting what your team comp is. You don't give a shit about what your team is. Your four, your four teammates are basically bots that you use as baits to get kills and to win. That's the mindset. You yeah, that's so, that's, that's so true. That's so true. That's yeah. literally the mindset that you go for. So, yeah, you use your own team to get them to Dark Harvest range, yeah. and then you just farm yeah. those stacks, like boy. Be, yeah, like, uh, ju just be giga selfish. Like, that's my best advice for uh, climbing out of the That's that's That was my first breakthrough when I got out of it, to be honest. But yeah. What was the next how, do you get, how do you get orbs without anything? Okay, so you only gank lanes that have guaranteed flashes. That you can get guaranteed flashes from, if not even kills. You keep power farming, meanwhile... And eventually, as the game progresses, you're going to be getting more orbs from ganks. And yeah, that's in the end how you get form around 10 minutes. Yeah, we, we we definitely discussed that. It's it's yeah. definitely like, yeah. don't try to force early the orbs that you get scale. So Yeah, like you just get all exactly. your orbs in a fight like at 10 minutes. So it's don't focus too much on getting your orbs. You just, you just want to play like overall, if you just play regular good league of legends you are going to get your ores because you will be taking the right opportunities and exactly. you'll just gain ores from that like you don't need to fo obsessively focus on the orbs that you want to get the only thing though is if you can't take trades like for example you can't take trades that you know you're not going to win but that you can easily escape out of you can do that j j just yeah. for free orbs if it doesn't waste too that much could of be, your time. for example like yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, Uzir does a lot of damage, but, like, for example, you can't really kill Echo, mm. but you can you can easily trade into him early game until he runs away or, like, you have to run away. And Yeah, it's so like, you yeah. can do some basic trading that leads to nothing for them, but that leads to orbs for you. That's, the, like, the only place that I would think that I would do something substantial for for getting orbs. But aside from that, just play just play good, I guess, yeah. Yeah, just play your regular ass League of Legends game. Yeah. All right. So Red King's build is a lot more situational once you have DD. What should I build into? I mean, we already talked about item builds pretty much. Yeah. Like, there, there's no point to go back to that. Yep. Okay. You go so next. How do you play when you're behind in items and you don't have your form at like 13 minutes ish? You go rust. Who wants to go first? Uh, pretty I much, do. you'll just like, yeah, you'll you'll just pretty much go red, almost guaranteed. You're, if you're, you're a knock butt, yeah. And you just a play mostly. around your teammates. Like you have to. There's almost nothing you can do. Maybe you'll get like a big ass shutdown, get like one k gold cash in, go back. Then you can, yeah, yeah. Then you can potentially yeah, actually get it by yourself. But yeah, that, you, you, when you're behind, you really want to play for shutdowns. Like 
If, mm-hmm. Say, for instance, the enemy top laner has 1k gold on them. They've just destroyed your top laner, but your top laner has like a good CC ability, i.e. like their Camille, yeah. right? They have yeah. stun and a lockdown. What you'll do is you'll like, you'll ping the shit out of your support, be like, yo, come here. <laughs> leave your AD carry, come top lane, let's three man this guy. We're going to cash in, we're going to get a ton of XP, we're going to get a ton of gold. And like, hopefully he listens to you and you guys just like, you set up, hopefully you'll get form. You know, y- you have to like, when you're behind, you have to play around your team. That's just how it is. Like, okay, so I want you play well and you get ahead. You do whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Okay, so like, I want to hit a little bit on the 13 minutes no form thing because there's a difference between waiting on your form at 13 minutes and not even having your form. Like, yeah, not even waiting on your form at 13 minutes. So like, if you don't even have your your form like already at least Gross. waiting for. At 30 minutes, well, first of all, you're probably trolling, <laughs> and second of all, um, uh, or like you, you just just get the most unlucky game ever. But basically, yeah, like the game is already over. Like if you are this behind and you don't have form, you don't even you're not even waiting on form at 13 minutes. It's really bad. Obviously, you just go rust, right? Like you just, I guess you just end. You just really want to end to get your last orbs. Like you just really have to do that at that point. Like, as dumb as it sounds, and it kind of hits to, to to the question, the previous question, like, how do you get orbs without ending? Like, yeah, those are very different scenarios. Like, if you have 13 minutes, and you don't even have your form progression completed, like, just j- just run it down, dude. Like, I don't know, man. It's it's a really bad scenario to be in. But, yeah. Um, yeah that's Buy man, man, I'm you in time at, and then hope for the best. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Alright, anyway. What junglers can Kane actually be in a 1v1 if Kane were to invade? Um, so we're going off the assumption Let's say, that Kane get, is full HP. Yep. Kane is full HP. Enemy jungler is in the middle of a camp. Uh, you can be a pretty decent portion of the jungle roster. Yeah. Um, the problem isn't really whether you can beat the jungler. It's whether you can beat the jungler or like either kill the jungler, take the camp, and then leave before the enemy team collapses on you. Yeah. Um, that's what makes like priority is such a well known fact in League of Legends now. That's what makes it harder to invade. Is like if people are paying attention, they'll see you go into their jungle and they'll just rotate. Like they're already on top of it. You need to like. To really have successful invades, you need to play around priority. Yeah. Um, but I would say that you be a pretty decent portion. There's yeah. very few junglers that you wouldn't beat if they're like losing HP to a camp and you come in with full HP to fight them. Yeah, like if you were to invade, like you would probably beat like I mean the ones that we already mentioned, like the ones that you already beat, like pretty much every tank jungler. Aside from, but even J four in that situ- in that scenario, you could probably be like every tank jungler and uh, probably like Kha'Zix. You can easily beat if he's doing if you're invading him in a bad spot. Yeah, if like Rangar, despite being a bad matchup that we talked about earlier, if you fight him on a like a camp that doesn't have a bush super close to it, i.e., Gromp Wolves, yeah. uh, he can be pretty free. Uh, yeah. The ones that I would be very careful about invading are like. Rexai, Olaf, Lee Sin, Graves, uh, yeah, Orvik, Graves. Uh, never invade Graves. Never. Um, Warwick too, maybe Kindred, because of the healing. And, and yeah, Warwick can turn on you a lot too. Warwick actually wants to be at low HP when he fights you. So. Yeah, exactly. Just like Olaf. Actually, no, Olaf. Like not, Olaf. But Do, never innovate Olaf. Holy shit. Yeah, yeah. Don't I just mean, fucking. Yeah. I mean, you you will never get to invade Olaf anyway because chances are you'll just be sitting in your jungle all game. But you know. Just a heads up. You can hope you can he, you're gonna hope you can keep your own drum. Yeah, so like don't even think about invading him, bro. Like fuck that shit. <laughs> um Alright, let's go to the next question. Yeah, let's just go to the next question. Um what champs are similar to Kane in both forms? I think Kazix is actually both. Kazix? Uh, yeah, actually if you go fully tell He's just Kha'Zix. a better version of both forms, not gonna lie. Uh, yeah, like if he goes bruiser know. build, he's just like a better Ross if he goes Exactly. Like Kha'Zix, If he goes like, bruiser you... build, he's like a better Shadow yeah. Assassin like, too. It's, looking, it's yeah, pretty like, cool. If yeah. you're looking for a champion in case like you want a one trick in or main king or whatever if you're looking for a champion to second that a lot of the skill transfer is from one to the other kha'zix is a really good one kha'zix is one of my uh, secondary champions as well and it's a I'm very thinking about good picking one. him up right now yeah actually. like it's it's a like a most cane mains 
that you see actually do play Kha'Zix as a secondary. It's just a really similar champion. Yeah, dude, haha, me too, haha. Yep. <laughs> I mean, you don't play anything else, dude. <laughs> don't you, like, dodge when Kane is Like some Masochist. Uh... No, I typically just int on some other champion, if I'm gonna be honest. I yeah. swear Heimerdinger a few days ago. Yeah, I mean, like, if I'm autofilled, like, bot lane, I'll just play Heimerdinger and, like, pray. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for me, it's, like, Kane. For me, it's, like, Kha'Zix, Master Yi, then it's, like, Kartus I can play decently. And then like, I, I have three jungle jugglers that I'm confident playing that aren't Kane, and they are Skarner, Vi, and Trundle. And I don't think that any of them are similar to yeah. either form of Kane, really. Except, like, maybe yeah. Trundle, kind yeah. of similar to Red Kane, a little yeah. bit. Okay, aside from uh, Kha'Zix, like that, like, uh, aside from Kha'Zix and, like, similar to Kane, Hecarim is a really similar champion to Rost. If you want to pick up something of that similar playstyle, Hecarim is very good. Hecarim's yeah, you also go in and you drain like Tank and you just shit on them. Yeah, like, Hecarim is really fun. I actually think of picking him up, like, uh... I've actually been thinking of picking up recently. Like if you're playing Hecarim, get if you're playing Hecarim, get a fucking Yumi 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 duo player. Oh yes, that is. I mean, you could say the same thing with Kane too. Like yeah, 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 exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Dude, dude, you go, dude. Bo bo both forms is just insane with Yumi. Like it's disgusting. It's what Karas but... is abusing right now. Actually, I've seen him yeah. play yesterday. He was like doing with some Yumi player. Yeah, he was boosting some E girl. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Oh, next next serious question because there's a lot of like joke questions in here too yeah uh, okay well, what is the next serious question probably the how do you feel about the current meta and feel of the game what would you change okay so how do i currently feel about it it's horseshit what i would change i guess is would be uh, i would have to think about it though like mike what would you actually change Alright, so I want farm farming the jungle to be a more viable playstyle, because, like, as much as we've talked about full clear, like, if you just full clear and you're not Shyvana or Karthus, you're just also kind of trolling, like... Yeah. The, the whole jungle meta right now is just based around, like, shitting on early game, getting dragons, and then being able to secure soul with the pressure that you accumulated early game, and then turning that into a win. Uh, it's it's very not fun. I feel like the jungle meta is super stale. It's boring. Like especially at high low, it's like Elise, Lee, Echo, Olaf, Karthus, every game, and like occasionally you'll see J four as well. Yeah. Super boring. Um, I don't really have a problem with anything else in the meta. Like people complain a lot about tank meta. I I personally don't really give a fuck about it. Like sure, the only tank that I think, huh? If you're a game player, you don't care about tank meta, yeah. Also, like, I, I also enjoy playing tanks personally. Like, I think Sion, Sion is one of my favorite champions in the game. Um, but, like, the only tank that I find egregiously, like, obnoxious to play against is Ornn. Yeah. That's the, the only God. tank that I hate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ornn's, yeah. Ornn's pretty annoying. So, like, personally, the only problem that I have with the game right now is, is jungle meta. I think that Herald is very rewarding, and I think it's way better than it was last season, yeah. which is good. Because if you have top lane prior, you can get two heralds. Um, of course, obviously, the play most of the time is just going to be spam gank bot lane. Like, it's been for so many seasons. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Nothing real. Like, it seems like a lot of cha has, has changed, and, like, it has. But fundamentally, a lot is still okay. the same. Okay, so as far as I go... What I would change is I would remove Stopwatch from the game, first of all. <laughs> yes, oh, okay. I, yeah, I definitely... Stopwatch needs to go. Yeah, I, I don't... Think, so, yeah. I don't... Ha like, it's still an issue, but I think it's way more egregious as uh, a rune that you can take yeah. and getting 650 gold for free than I think it is, like, buying it. Like, buying it, it definitely sucks, but, like, there's nothing that triggers me as much as going for a dive on bot lane and their support stopwatch comes up and then we get like triple killed because their support stopwatch yeah like it's just from a I rune think overall it's bad game design like it it's re it rewards bad play in a sense like it's just it's just bad game design it's uninteractive it's not fun to use it's not fun to play against it's just like overall zonia's i guess is a full item and it is a needed mechanic in the game because if you remove Zonias, assassins become 
utterly broken, okay? So I will never say that we should remove Zanya's. Maybe increase the cost a little bit or make it less that overreaching because I think it gives yeah, you, the, the problem it gives you too much on is The problem is giving Zanya's uh, active access to everybody. Yeah. That's that's where the issue lies. Like, because Zanya's can only be built by, like, a certain subset of champions in the game. Yeah. But when everybody gets stopwatch active, it's it's super yeah. obnoxious. Yeah, like, overall, Zanya's, sure, I could say that maybe increase the cost or whatever. But even then, leave Zanya's as it be. I don't really care. That's a little bit of my personal bias. But stopwatch needs to go. Like, it's still... Not. Even I, if you, I 100% I, I agree. Stopwatch is such a bullshit buy, item. That's... Even, if you buy, even if you buy it, it builds into Zanya, and that one-time use can literally swing a game. Like and, Also, and it, if you're so ahead, you can buy Zonia's and stopwatch, or GA and stopwatch? Yeah. <laughs> it's so stupid. Anyway, that's enough stopwatch rating. That shit sucks. It needs to be removed. Yeah, yeah, that's basically, like, uh, I'm done talking about that shit, I'm already shaking, dude, like, fuck that shit. Dude. Anything else you would change about the meta, okay. or yeah, just, yeah. like, the game in general? Yeah, anything I would change about the game, I guess, the same thing you mentioned, rewarding more of a farming playstyle, because, yeah, it's just been the same shit. End of Season not, end of season 8 was the only time where I feel like the jungle meta was good, with all Dark Harvest. End of Season 8 were, like, the best times for Kane by far, in my opinion. And then after that, they oh, yeah, all the artists, and then it just went all to shit. But um, yeah, aside from that, I'll probably bring back all dark artists. Then I guess we're, we're at it. Like I think that was just a really good rune. I don't think it had any problems. I don't think, like, uh, I don't understand why they even removed. It. I guess it was because of the amount of upfront damage. But like, and I guess people were complaining a lot about a lot of damage in the game at the time. But I don't know. I think I think like, all dark artists was fine. I don't think it was the issue. I think the issue was the meta and not the rune. But uh, yeah, aside from that, what I would change is probably nerf like probably nerf a handful of champions. Obviously, like I think that Cassio, for example, is overtuned. I think Echo is overtuned. I think Wukong needs to be reverted and fucking just re reverted to being a shit champ again. Like fuck that champ. <laughs> In all of my 10 past ranked games, I've had Wukong in like 9 of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, a uh, really cool champion. Yeah, I can't, I, I Very can't. Very fun. Yeah. Like, it's just 200 I'm so years tempted now. to ban him, but I can't ban him. I, I guess I would also advise Riot to stop releasing champions, because each champion they release is just a literal abomination. I think the only... Yeah, it's okay... a dumpster fire balance nightmare. I, 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 Every... I think... Single yeah. one. Yeah. I, okay. I think the only champion that they newly released that was that is okay is Set. I think Set is okay, but yeah. I think he's balanced now. But he was definitely really overtuned when he first yeah. came out. But I think Set also was managed to be balanceable. Like Set is very balanceable as a champion because he's a he's a really simple kid. Like that, that, that it's a really fucking simple champion, right? But champion, just you're just too champions damaged. like a Kali. Champions like. Champions like Kiana, you can't balance that shit. It's either useless or overpowered. Like, it doesn't matter. I've seen yeah. patch notes of oh, yeah, next patch, Kiana, and apparently, please. shit like Jax, Akali, Fiora is getting nerfed. Is that mm. true? Has any of you seen it? Uh, mm. I would have to check Star 20. I haven't seen any announcements yet, but we'll see. Okay, no, more uh, serious changes that I would do. Aside from that, I guess, um,. Yeah, I mean, that's basically it. I don't think I can extrapolate too much more than that because we would have to see what the all first changes would perhaps have an impact. Like, it's really hard to think of all variables now, but nerf the champions that should be nerfed and make the jungle meta a little bit healthier, obviously. And that that would basically be also remove stopwatch for that. Yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> so, Fuck stopwatch, man. I think. Dark Lauren, Harvest do do? needs to be rewarded, but I, I can't remember if that was the case back then, but if it wasn't, they should definitely nerf Dark Harvest damage and ranged champions, I think. Yeah, for sure. 100%. Yeah, the, beside, beside, I hate Karthus. Every thing, yeah. every Dude, dude, wait. You revert Dark Harvest, you fix the Karthus problem, what? 
That's it's true. Fucking, fucking big brain. You fix the cartas problem. You buff Kane. You buff a, a certain farming playstyle. Like it's just, dude. You reverse our cards. You actually fixed a lot of problems in itself. And then what? Just what nerf the, what, 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 nerf the what champion. Next? Nerf the damage of it and range yeah. champions though. Yeah. And then what? Because they can what, be what very, next? very. Next, oppressive. you remove stopwatch. Next, you buff jungle XP. And next, you actually have a playable game. Holy fuck! I'm a genius. Oh god. Big brain. All right, let's, let's go, go next, next question. I don't here. actually understand the next question. What other jungle preferences would be better for this season? Uh, let me find it. Um, but actually, is that even the qu next question? Well, the next question is why do you get stuck in the nexus when you eat through it sometimes, like one second not moving, and I don't know that never happens. Because happened. of yeah, it's just right. Coding the do you, all right, do you prefer spam ganking in order to get a random form than waiting, or is it better to time your ganks on the right lane to get the form that you want? Um, we talked about it. We, sure. we did talk about this. Yeah. Generally, it's it's more beneficial to just focus on getting gold because your form will come. Yeah. Like, you'll yeah. always get form. You will definitely miss opportunities to get gold, though. Yeah, don't like, get if I had to choose between getting a double kill bot lane. And getting 600 gold and then waiting four minutes for form or like going top let's, lane. Let's, let's just point out that it's okay to wait for form. Yeah, it, it is okay to wait for form. I feel like a lot of people feel like yeah. it's not. It's yeah, totally exactly. fine. Totally okay. You can definitely wait a few minutes for form. Like if it's if it's like a fucking full tank comp, you get Shadow Assassin first, don't fucking wait. D don't don't fucking take it. Wait for us, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, basically, uh, like, it's a concept that I mentioned before. Don't be overly obsessed and absorbed with getting your form. Like it will come if you play if you play the game properly. Some scenarios you can slightly bend your gameplay towards one or another, but do not miss good opportunities if it means that you don't get your form because a, a crucial fight may decide the outcome the outcome of the game way more than you getting your forms your, your form. Uh, your form um, uh, four minutes earlier because like you can like that fight can impact so much more than just you so i uh, yeah i feel yeah, like overall like, say, say you're say you're red side say you're red side and enemy bot lane is pushed up they have no flashes yeah. skip your wolves man skip your bot side jungle and just run down there yeah, just run. Yeah, you can even always come back rust. and clear your jungle yeah, yeah even if you're on rust and also like when waiting on form like uh it's what what do you do? What do you guys do actually when you wait on form? I usually like to AFK farm when I wait on form. Farm camps, farm camps, yeah, farm, farm, farm camps, farm, 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 farm camps. Basically. Just and, spam uh, farm and take, camps. And I'll, actually, one thing I like to do is try to sneak objectives if you can while waiting on form. That's actually really good as well. After I mean, Harold is free in like seventy five percent of all games I play. So yeah, exactly. Like especially if you're lower elo. You get Herald so easily, dude. Like it's it's so free. Like it's so if you if you get into, into a scenario in which you're waiting for a form, just get it, dude. Even if you're not Herald's waiting for form, so just fucking get it. Good. Herald's it's free. so fucking good. And also man. with Herald, it's a general jungle tip. Overall with Herald, you wanna crash it like obviously before the plays, but you wanna crash it into a tower with three plates left so that you get all the plate value, you kill it, and then you get into the next tower. It's a basic it's a basic Herald tip, but uh it's 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 useful to mention as well. Okay. All right. Explain why electric is strictly worse than Dracarys once and for all. Uh, you're early game. You're not early game dependent. You don't need the damage early yeah, game. You, you just want to. Yeah, that's the thing. Is that it? it yeah. It, it, nobody gives a shit about early game. Dark exactly. harvest more versatile. If like it, being yeah. able to reset in fights is huge. Being able to smite proc dark harvest is huge. It's yeah. just better. Yeah. There's Wait. so many people promoting it, but like in at the end of the day, you're probably it, just insecure it, okay. for not picking dark harvest, and that's, that's why you're promoting electric. Okay. Hit. That's the thing is that it used to be the go-to rune when the numbers were really good, but Hi. now yeah, yeah, electric numbers... used to do like double the damage that it does now. Yeah, like yeah. right after it, dark harvest got changed. I think it was electric hit meta. But and then, then after some. Wait, yeah. wasn't that before? I I don't know exactly the timeline. I actually have but no clue. But baseline baseline is you want to play off your strengths. Electrocute is not gonna suddenly make you win a one v one against Olaf. Like 
Yeah, just, yeah, definitely not. Just, definitely not. It's just not going to do anything for you. Docker is just more versatile. Like overall, you can proc it more often late yep. game as well. Yep. It's just yep. And you can snipe people low HP targets with W. Yeah, that too. That too. Yeah. That yeah. is actually Huge so bad damage. when you pull it off. Yeah. Like overall, it's just way better. <laughs> Explain right, why see. I shouldn't take Omnistone Kane. Is that even a serious question? <laughs> okay, that serious. shit sucks. Next! Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Okay, next. Alright, explain, explain why, why Ross is... Yeah, explain why Ross is generally more played and more versatile than SA. Okay, um, so I think that... Because it's metal, because be you have more... It's because Ross just has more strength than SA. While well, SA is more of an all or nothing, SA has very high strengths and very low weaknesses. Whereas Rost, it kind of like shifts down a little bit. Like Rost has less weaknesses, but doesn't probably give that explosive, like 1v9 all over the map power that SA would give you. Like overall, it's, it's just kind of SA is more high risk, high reward. So by definition, high risk, high reward means less versatile. Like that's just that, that's just basically a dichotomy. While Rust is more uh, has more things that he can do, more things that more situations in where he works, and he is able to do more things than just like one shot people like SA does, for example. So that's basically the answer. Anybody else has anything to add to that? Nope. Uh, so that pretty much sums it up perfectly. Okay. Ex <laughs> Why are these right, questions man. a thing, man? Fuck it. <gasps> oh, God. Explain why Kane is in fact gay for Zed. <laughs> yeah, that's just... <laughs> oh, my God. I can't. I can't. This is too uh, much. And uh, Nerissid, Nerissid, have you read the... Have you, have you read the Zed comics? Nope. Huh? No, I haven't. <laughs> Not like none of us have. None of us have. Nope. Good. Okay. All right. I want to hear your guys' opinion on this. Soul Hunter Kane, better or worse than base? Um. I mean, I know uh, what no. I know what you I know what your opinion is on that. You really like uh, Soul Hunter Blue because of that reference to one game. Yeah, to Bloodborne. Yeah, Bloodborne. Yeah. But I don't play that game, so like, I really like. Uh, I don't know. I think Soul Hunter feels smooth because there's one sound that you do not hear when queuing on on Soul Hunter while on Red. While on Normal King, you actually hear both sounds. So it feels a little smoother, I feel like. What do you think? I think um, it feels smoother. I think the smoothest skin is definitely Odyssey, though. I think the auto attack animations feel way lighter. Okay, unpopular opinion. I don't like Odyssey Blue at all. Yeah, right. me neither. Okay. Me neither. Me neither. Okay, okay. I, I highly disagree. I really like Odyssey Blue. I love Odyssey Red. I hate Odyssey Blue. And I know what it is. It's it's the W animation. I don't... I, I just don't like it. I think it's fun. But my favorite part of Odyssey Blue is the ulti. I, I really like it. The Oh yeah, the ult is really cool. Yeah, the sound of it. And overall, I like the voice lines as well. I think they're yeah, good. like my favorite part of Odyssey Red is the voice line, like when he says, like, squirm in your own steaming guts. Like, I feel that. Yeah, or like when Odyssey Blue says, fucking all hail Emperor Kane, dude, after you kill like three people, it's like, dude, it's the dream. I don't know, man. You guys don't like it, but I fucking love it. <laughs> it's amazing. All right, we've kind of talked about what other jungle preferences would be better for this season. Um, I skipped over. Are there any runes you feel are underrated but the jungle and in general? Like, no. Kane? No. I no. We pretty much the, discussed that. Yeah, you are very limited. Dark, Harvest and Conquer are the only runes you should ever yeah, go for. You should never period. play There's nothing. anything else than those two, basically. Yeah. Nothing is better than those two, yeah. Like, I guess for some people that may be unaware, I guess, like, presence of mind, some people are not aware of it yet. Because small runes? Yeah, use. small. Yeah. Yeah, like, small people runes, people tend. And then obviously like, yeah, the, yeah, transcendence play, the transcendence build if you're going into a lot of AP as well. I guess those are the only real variations that you can do. But now overall runes are a very one-dimensional. Even in the game in general, you don't see a lot of variation. Yeah. It's, I tell like, those Koreans come up with something and then it's all over everywhere. Yeah. Hey, is Yasuo a bad matchup in the jungle? Yasuo is so fucking free as can. 
I, 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 I'm a two trick. I play Yasuo mid and I play Kane jungle. Yasuo is so free for, for Kane. You always double you behind you. Yeah, Bell, you better. always, yeah. like, I don't know. You just ult him while he's while, while he has his Q charged and then he can't do anything. He just sucks cock. Yeah, and that's the thing is that if he has a, his knock up charge and he dashes into you, you just double you behind yourself and you'll knock him up while he's ulting you. And then he can't get yeah. his auto right away. Like, it's. Yasuo overall is free. Even as blue, you just yeah. one-shot him. Yeah, Unless he exactly. gets Phantom Dancer, but even if you do, like, if you're fed, you just shit on him. Like, overall, in Yasuo, what I like to do is, I walk up to him, I wait to see what he does. If he do if he is behind me, I have a reaction time to just WQ or W if I'm playing Rust. Like, overall, it's easy to outplay. Now, if mm -hmm. he has a huge minion wave, you just you just don't win. Then you just kind of waste your time, wasting your time, but overall, Yasuo is simple. As far as the champion yeah. goes, now I'm I'm not gonna talk about the jungle matchup because yeah I'm not brain damaged. So I said earlier, just to remind people, if there's like three crit enemy champions, like yeah, so Randuins, 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 exactly. Yeah, that's something that's I it. that's something that I actually kind of failed to do. That like Randuins, I barely build it, but into those scenarios, Honestly, I love Randuins. I love Randuins on, on Rust. Yeah, like it, it, the slow that it gives you as well in team fight for setting up a knockout yeah, that's, will be good. It feels good. But yeah, I will. I'll definitely look look, look for that. Though. Like uh, certain things I do, but that's definitely like uh, I usually am a very resilient to build like full tank items on Rust because I usually just want to one v nine. But yeah, that's definitely. Uh, a strong argument. What are some fun runes mm. to play with as Kane? Uh, Conquer and Dark Harvest. <laughs> Conquer okay. and Dark if, Harvest. If you, if you have to be like a hipster, like I don't like what's popular, the only other rune I would ever... Spellbook? Actually, there's two. Spellbook, I think, is unironically the best rune for early game on Red Kane. A hundred percent. It is better than any other room. Being able to take Ignite into a gank is nuts. The only problem is, like, it's awful after, like, your first three ganks. It's I'd terrible. imagine Exhaust Souls would be solid. Yeah, like, yeah. the other one is, like, if, you, if you're if you for funning it, like, Predator Blue Cane is pretty funny. Yeah, I just want other people. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, but like realistically, never go this. Conquer Dark Harvest. Okay, if you play Lane Cane, you could go Comet into some matchups. Oh. But even like the one guy that plays mid Kane in like US Challenger, he doesn't even take comments. He just takes all the six dark harvest every game. But I guess if you wanna have fun, every game. I guess if you wanna have fun and like, oh, I land, uh, I just land free comment on every W. I guess you can't take comment, but it's just not that good. But I guess if your goal is fun, you can. <laughs> Wait, I, I skipped a question. Is Dark Harvest viable on Rost? That's actually a good question. And there, I mean, obviously the response is yes, uh, but it depends. It, like, you wouldn't take it depends over Depends on the Conquer. enemy comp. Like, you wouldn't take it over Conquer if you can't take Conquer, but you want to take it into comps. Odd, odd, okay, so the only time you want to take Dark Harvest, you end up with Two, Dark three, Harvest on Rost, is games where you can go both forms. Or games that, um, or games that they basically like a lot of conditions has to be met. There has to be like they have to be like all volatile champions that don't allow you to uh, that volatile champions with low amount of kiting that don't have a lot of CC chain, and that yes, yeah, it's just a lot of conditions that have to be met to make like dark harvest rost heavy damage viable. But overall, yeah, sure, it, it's viable. It just and it's fine if you end up with it, but um, it's just uh, overall you just prefer conquer in most scenarios. Marion, you take the next one. Is it the grass with the undying? Hell no! What the fuck? Okay. That's troll. Wait, wait, wait. How? Wait, which is the next question? Ah, uh, the Pedro's. Uh, how should I get into a team fight? Pedro. Okay. How should I get into a team fight with Kane? Two transformations. Okay. Um. Shadow Assassin, you look for place where you can flash W into multiple enemies, flash w or you too. flank, but you usually do that while flanking. And Rust, on Rust, um, I think you try to flash W the backline. Yeah, uh, also, you can. The other thing that you can do is Ross is you can play team fights front to back really easily. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that's, you, that's what I was going yeah. to. Like, front to you back are is in really good. 
incredible front to back fighter. Yeah. Like, you can peel for your uh you can peel for your back line, you can threaten enemy front line, you can threaten enemy back line, you're yeah. super versatile. Yeah, like team fighting, as I said, is Kane's pretty much main strength, I would say even. Like one of his main strengths at least. Like you can hold an entire front line to yourself. You can like threaten to W the back line. You can you can peel for your ADC, you can shred the front line while tanking through it because the more shredding you do, the more draining you do. Like it's just it's just really good. Like overall as Ross, just you should just play front to back. I wouldn't suggest going for the back line though. Obviously if you can get a good flash W you go for it. But um overall you're really weak against kiting. So um yeah, just play from the back. Like it's really, really good. And blue cane just flank slash flash WQ into like if they position if they give you the position the proper positioning for you to be able to. But yeah, that's essentially it. What should I do when I'm ahead in Kane's early game? Because I always end up getting four zero and I end up dying after losing the advantage. Yeah, I don't you give play up for objectives. Dude. Okay. Yeah, you play for objectives, okay. you play safe. Okay, so what I'm assuming is that you get ahead, like, when you have... That you're getting ahead preform. That's what I'm assuming when, when you're referring to early game. And what I'm saying is, if you get a lot of kills as Kane, falling back to farming is actually kind of important. Because if you spend a yeah. lot of time in the, into skirmishes and you're not farming, then a lot of that golden XP that you would that you would have gotten through farming you lose so that creates an imbalance so fall back into farming your camps after some crazy skirmishes that you come up ahead solidify your lead so first of all you want to do that yeah. and then i guess you want to just push your lead get your form and like uh you 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 want to be, be playing you want to be proactive at that point in you the game. don't gank losing lanes if you have a losing course, lane you don't and yeah. you're fed you, you don't do that. The enemy could potentially get shut down gold from you, yeah. and then their lead would their, their lead yeah. would just look, snowball them to victory. Okay, look for tower dives. Just look if they have stopwatches, but if they don't, look for tower dives. Like your ulti, yeah. especially after level 6, you have... Like, Kane's level 6 power spec is much stronger than people think, because your ult allows you to play, like, such good tower dives if you have the proper teammate to do it with, and you'll get a lot of opportunities to do that. So, like, get dives, like, get free dragons, get free heralds, crash herald, and I would prioritize crashing herald into mid lane if you can, because opening up mid lane is yep. a huge strategic it advantage, especially enemy. for you as a jungler, it's Don't a huge play. strategic advantage. So, uh, yeah, do that and just play, just play off your strengths and... Don't fight like easy. don't don't get ahead of yourself and don't go in for one way threes because you're still of not course, capable of, of course, Don't that. go, don't try like that used to be one of my problems actually. I would always try to go for the montage plays. Don't try to go for Time. montage plays because, like, unless but if you're really confident that you can make something more than go for it, but usually like don't don't over don't overdo it because no. if you throw your shutdown goal, especially as a champion as king, especially if you're playing blue, you wanna be high tempo, you every single move you do you want it to be right. And like you are much playing Ross is much more forgiving because if you do mistakes you can still have other things. But as blue cane, you kinda have to play all of your moves perfectly into a clean one. Otherwise you give so much to the enemy team because As we mentioned a few days ago in our group chat, like yeah, if you if you're blue cane and you give shutdown gold, you 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 lost the game for yourself. Yeah, I mean you didn't lose the game, but like it's it's really bad, right? Like you want to play really off that momentum properly and not get ahead of yourself. Yep. But yeah, that's basically the answer. Uh, all right, let's see where do we go next. Um. All right, a bunch of for fun questions. Uh, how do you probably build Ross depending on game? Feels like every game I just rush jungle item, black cleaver, correct, boots, correct. That I'm stuck between spirits and death stands, but end up building both. The build is always the same, but should I still be building spirit vestiges and death stands so they have anti healing? Uh, yes. How do I know which one to build first? Uh, you only go spirit visage third item if you are behind versus a lot of AP damage now. And yeah. it, for. For posterity's sake, yes, you still build Death Stance and Spear Visage if you have to into anti healing. It's yeah. Why wouldn't you? Exactly. I don't. I I don't really understand the thought process. Like they're still really good items. Like them building anti healing doesn't yeah, make but, them bad items. Yeah, that's the but, thing is that you with your passive and the combination of all those items, it actually makes the anti healing almost as if you were playing 
almost as if it didn't really exist, but you didn't have those items, right? Like it's it kind of just plays against it, I guess. Just don't like, build your base stats because like your base stats are shit. That's what you need to understand. You have the base stats of Blue King when you're playing Red King. Your base stats don't magically change when you transform. So your most efficient way of th of thinking is to still drain tanking. So like building full armor items is just it's it's good into full it's good into like the scenarios that we mentioned, but it's not something you want to be doing because you lose a lot of value. Like a lot of cha a lot of champions can can just build full armor items and do that job better. You want to play off your strengths, as I said. But also, I, th did that guy even mention Sterax? No. Like yeah, no, I think, he doesn't. yeah, Sterax. No, exactly. Yeah, Sterax like, after exactly. yes, yeah, Sterax after Death Dance. You need to be thinking about because it is what you will end up building most yeah. of the time. It is way too strong into way too many scenarios so yeah and after I that just, i guess you can go gear guardian angel or yeah i mean in the end you're probably gonna have both yeah like most of the all rounded up games you're gonna be going that build all right we're exactly. getting towards the end of the questions which runes do you prefer between prince of mind versus triumph coup versus last 10 for prisoner primary I mean, we did answer that, but I guess we can... Yeah, we talked about this. I'll sum it up real quick. Uh, presence of Mind and Coup on Blue. Blue Cane secondaries, and Triumph Last Stand on Red Cane as secondaries. Yeah, and you can take... That's really simple. Yeah, and you can take Presence of Mind on Red if they have, like, super tanks that will make you fight, like, for hours long, so then you absolutely need the mana to keep going because you're really mana-hungry. But in general, you would just want to go Triumph, yeah. And I think that's pretty much that's it. That's pretty much it, yeah. That's all the questions. Yeah. I have one last question for you guys. Do you guys agree that High Noon Kane needs to happen? What? High Noon Kane? I, I would buy it. I'd buy it in a heartbeat. So, yeah. 100%. Are you going to join us or no? Um, I mean... Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I knew Kane would be good, obviously. Like, well, whatever Kane's can it is, as long as it's not fucking pool party Kane or some gay shit. Yeah, but... I, I don't want pool party at all. It'll yeah. be so boring, though. Yeah, I, I don't want to make a certain person happy, so yeah, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> I think I know the certain person you're talking about. <laughs> okay, uh, Lord, okay. Lord, Lord, dude. Okay, let's go next. Let's go next. Um, That's yeah, it. No, that that's fine. the yeah. end of the questions. Yeah, that's pretty much the end of the questions. So... What do, do we just do an outro or whatever? Like, what's going on? Yeah, I guess we'll just do an outro. Yeah. Um. Okay. Well, Kane Mains, thank you guys for suggesting us questions. Thank you guys for giving us questions, we, so we could answer them obviously for you. Um, we hope that this solidifies some facts that you guys were previously not aware about, aware of, and yeah. I think uh, that's it. Uh, also, specifically for me, um, Rastafarian, if you guys want a matchup sheet, I would be more than happy to collaborate with Narasid and get something out for the server and the um, subreddit. Just let us know if there's demand for that. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, okay, yeah, I, can, so... I, can, I can make some announcement message and then I can tell you guys about it. Yeah, yeah. I'll just add something, though. Like... Uh... Like, uh, if you missed some parts or if you just want to rewatch some things, this this whole recording will be posted, like, uh, on my YouTube channel, like, in a few days or whatever. So if you want to rewatch it or anything, if you missed some parts, it will be up there on my YouTube. It's, it's just Noracid. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's basically it. Thank you guys so much for watching.